September 21st, 2017, uh, Cattle Pack Commission regular session order. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Dominic, Present. Lennon Johnson, Present. Jackson, Lynn, Here. Bowman, Cawthorn, Gage Watts, Middleton, Atkins, Chavez, Present. Smith, Present. Lewis Present. Johnson. Present. We have a quorum, sir. Uh, we have Commissioner Doug Dominic lead us in the invocation and Commissioner uh, Matt, Matt, Land, us All right, please. Let's bow Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today. I ask and pray that you'll watch over, forgive us in our many sins, forgive us in our failures and faults and our shortcomings. Be with us as we go forward with this commission meeting. Be with our constituents and our residents. Uh, special pray for our Ottawa citizens and cattle parish, especially our military and military aboard as well, abroad as well as home. Dear Lord, thank you. I ask you to pray for all the wonderful things you've done. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please face our flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance along with me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Kirk, do we have any agenda additions? I have none. No agenda additions. Um, Thanks. Next, we move to citizens' comments. Citizens, okay, citizens' comments. Citizens who will wish to address the commission on any issue other than zoning uh, must fill out a comment card located in the chamber for you and return to the president or clerk of the commission. Individual comments are limited to three minutes. Uh, please note citizens who wish to address the commission on matters uh, relative to public hearing, which are items that are listed on our agendas, will be limited, will be limited to a cumulative of 15 minutes each for or against an issue. Those who wish to speak or make a presentation or actually submit their speakers and address the points they wish to be considered with this limitation in mind. And so if you're here to speak on issues that are on the agenda, I have you set for the public hearing, so those will not go on to public comment. Uh, Anna Cole, Chuck, can you hear me back there? Kelvin, can you hear me? Chuck, can you hear me? The last time too. Call in order, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all right if I if I make a comment about the monument? I didn't write it on my card because I was in such a hurry. Sure. Is that all right? Yeah. I, I think uh, all of you have real have heard me before. You know what I stand for. I would very much just like to say uh, that of course I would like to see the monument stay. It's been there ever since I was a little girl walking with my friends down Sprague Street, walking downtown. It's, I'm in my 70s, it's just, it's just a monument, but it, it has meaning to me and a lot of people. And I'm not here to think that I can change anyone's vote by any means. I'm just a little old lady. But I do believe in speaking from my heart and saying how I feel. And a lot of people aren't here because they feel that they could not change any vote. They do care. And I would so much, so much, I know at the last meeting someone said uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, the great Dr. Martin Luther King, statues where it should belong. I'd love to see it on the courthouse with history. I, at my age, I'm not for taking anything away. I'm for adding. Let's go forward. And I love everyone. And I don't know if any of you saw me on Channel 12. They asked to interview me. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, it was a thrill for me. Uh, and. Uh, I would very much, I just don't want to see these groups come to Shreveport and disrupt our city. We have a good city. We all get along well. And there was a time when I was rather upset a little. Not anymore. That's not me. I'm for equality, love, compassion, respect for one another, and coming together in unity and keeping our city the way it is. We have very little, I mean, as far as people getting along. We have very little problems here, in my opinion. And again, it's just a monument but to some people. I had ancestors, so I can only ask. I'm not here to think I can change anyone. Only God can do that. And everything is in his hands, as we all know. 
to serve people, Mr. Johnson. They do. They just know they can't change it. They don't feel that they don't feel that they can change a vote. But thank you, sir, for your comments, and I understand. And and God bless all of you. And I'm just here, and uh, I, I can only pray. But it is in God's hands that we can go forward. We have a good city, and we love one another, and we respect one another. Let's keep it that way, and not over a, a monument that it's not hurting anyone. Let's uh, go forward as I feel like Dr. Martin Luther King, which I think, really, this is from my heart. He's one of the greatest men that ever lived. African American people were treated so badly. But the Civil War was about so much more. That bloodshed was about so much more. And he, I, I, think he, I don't think he would be concerned about a monument. He would be concerned about us going forward and loving one another. I'm not, not dividing. Thank you, sir. I'm not going to go over this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think our legal, either our legal or our clerk will have to advise me on this one. I have two cards for one person on two different issues. So how do we mastermind that? Or how do we? Three minutes on each. Talk three minutes. Three minutes a piece? No. Okay, Mr. Bill Weiner. <coughs> and you choose the two. I have the other part as well. So. Yeah, they're two different subjects. Right, right. But I have what third. I wanted to speak about. I got the third card as well. Well, I wanted to speak about the citizens' comments that's on the agenda. Okay. Uh, you have comments, I presume, to get input from the citizens so you can make an informed decision. Uh, but when you limit it to citizens who wish to address the comments on matters related to public he hearings, items listed only a comment on only will be limited to a cumulative of 15 minutes each for or against an issue. Uh, that's not right. That means if somebody is neither for or against or just has something to say, they should have the same rights to address the council irrespective of the time that's used by other people. And I want you to look into changing that item. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weiner, you also are on for- Mr. Weiner, Mr. Weiner. Mr. Weiner. You're also on for ordinance uh, <coughs> 5718 as well. Uh, I had three of them in there, but uh, yes, and the oh, second okay. one is 57 uh, I'm the same person as before. Uh, I want to speak about the fence around the courthouse. Not, it's not the fence, I think it's the 5712, 5718 is what you're on for. What is, is the uh, setting the rules at the courthouse? Oh, yes, okay, yeah, look, Shreveport. I know it with the parish meeting, but Shreveport <coughs> is headed for destruction and bankruptcy in a couple of generations by the paths it's taking, that's giving an image out to the rest of the country that we're racist and not progressive. And when Shreveport goes down bankrupt, it's going to do the same to the parish. And the items in that resolution are pretty onerous. It, it's, a, it's a way to arrest anybody for anything, dropping a piece of paper on there. And if you look at it, if you've read it, you will see there's an utterly ridiculous item in there dealing with bridges. There are no bridges on the courthouse. I, I ask that you look at this resolution and try to modify it where it's friendly, where we look like we're open to the world, not you cannot do this, cannot do that, you can't do this. Why not have it? You can do things. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Want the other one? We're going to come back on the public okay. here. Uh, Craig B. Lee. Huh. Should I say B. Craig B. Lee? Where's he been? We haven't seen him in a while. That's that B. Bernard. Uh, good evening. Craig Lee, uh, 1035 Eustis Street. Uh, Mr. Weiner and I go back a long time. I've been back here since 1994, and I left corporate America. 
it's unfortunate when I hear comments um, like the uh, elderly uh, white um, female that just spoke because it lacks the reality of Shreveport. Um, I pulled up a document um, before I came up here. Shreveport is ranked in the top 50 worst cities um, in America, and Shreveport is the, is the seat um, pretty much for cattle pairs. Um, and the, the bottom line um, that holds the city of Shreveport and Cattle Paris back is the whole issue of race and, and white supremacy. Now, in her view, I, I can understand she doesn't see racism, everything, everything is good. But we know that that's not the case. Um, at one point in time, Shreveport and Dallas were pretty much the same size. Shreveport has remained stagnant in its population for the past several decades. And why is that? Because we've lost our intellectual capital. We have these students in here from Southern. Uh, most of them are going to have to leave this city for opportunities because at the end of the day, Shreveport right now is stagnant at 198,000 people. There are no jobs being created. And roughly 55 to 60 percent of the workforce works for the public sector. I mean, they work for the city, the parish, the state, federal government, or some governmental agency. That means they're drawing down on the tax base. So what do you think is going to happen? And right now, Shreveport is pretty much the last city in the country that has a Confederate statue. So what do you think is going to happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Shreveport is pretty much the last city that has a Confederate statue. Because anybody that's progressive-minded knows if you're trying to be in a globalized economy, you're trying to open up for different cultural um, um, dynamics. Uh, Representative Jackson asked a great question the other day when I was coming in from Texas. I was listening. He said uh, he wanted to know how many voters, if there were any, there were African Americans at that time, and he wanted to know how many um, African American representatives were on the board at that time. Well, we know there were no African American representatives. We know that. So even if there were a few African American voters, we know that they would not have voted for a symbol of their oppression. It makes no sense. Now, this is real basic. It, it really is basic. And for people to say that they are not advocating white supremacy and racism by continuously advocating a symbol on a public grounds in 2017 is ludicrous. The bottom line, the statue needs to be placed where it needs to be, in a Confederate memorial uh, museum, so that if you desire to go and research and study Confederate history, you can. Uh, Mr. Middleton uh, referenced the other day going to the uh, museums in D.C. Well, those are museums. From that standpoint, I'll close out with this particular um, piece. We're at a particular point in this city's history and this parish history that if we do not embrace cultural diversity and the essence of globalized economy, we will always remain stagnant. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Al Moore. <coughs> Al Moore. Good evening. Um, thank you uh, for having me here today. I just wanted to uh, thank the commission for what uh, they have done for our ministry, which is the Christian service ministry. I'm so excited that we are announcing our grand opening uh, September 27th at 1 p.m. is located at 2346 Levy Street. And I wanted to come down publicly and invite each and every one of you to our grand opening on uh, September 27th, uh, September 27th at 1 p.m., 2346 Levy. Once again, we're still feeding uh, 364 days a year, two hot meals a day. Uh, the only day we're closed is Christmas Day. Uh, we're still doing our emergency assistance, which is helping people with their utility bills, such as gas, rental, and electric. And we still are uh, taking our clothing store. But what's so unique about us moving to this new facility, we are joining the Hope Connection, which I already have 12 different other organizations right there. And we'll be, we'll be bringing our food and our emergency assistance and our clothing store there. So you will be a one-stop shop. We are excited about it. Hope to see you there. And thank again uh, the commission for what they do for our ministry. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, last one, Pastor May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the house, yeah.
versus what's going on throughout the city of Sweetport. Good men make sound decisions and good women. We are a people that, a city that is moving forward. We are a diverse city and it's my hope that we can continue to live the, the ear wheels of the past. Sweetport is a city that is moving forward and to even have the discussion of putting a fence around the monument. Listen, news alert, the South lost. <laughs> when do the losing side get the opportunity to dictate what needs to be where? Good, good, will, good, good will men and women in this country to make us a more perfect union, they decided that we as a people need to do the right thing. It should not have taken this long for this body to make this decision. Y'all are goodwill. I don't believe that the mistakes of the past, we as goodwill people have to continue to live those mistakes over and over and over and over again. It is sad. And so I came down here again today. I'm here today, Brother Carthon. My brother is in the hospital in Houston with stage four cancer dying. I thought that this meeting was so important wow. to where I had to be here because that's how much this means to us as a city, to see this city from which I was raised in move forward. Now, I'm gonna leave right after this, but I didn't want to leave here without telling you good men up there and you good women of this city that how important it is for us to move forward and not backwards. As a city, as a whole, we cannot continue to rely on old past ideas. Our founding fathers wanted us to be a more perfect union. We're not perfect to the part. There's still things wrong in the city of Sweetport, but if we begin to work toward that which is right, we can overrule that which is wrong. There's goodwill people all on this council, on this, on this commission, I know that. We are a city of goodwill people. The majority of this city want this statue this monument removed. And I don't think a fence is gonna solve the problem. I think one thing is gonna solve the problem. If it has been determined that it belongs to the daughters of the Confederacy, then let them get a Go Me Fund Me, a Go Me Fund on Facebook, and let them fund the removal of the statue. It's simple. If a tree is in my neighbor's yard, and that tree just happened to fall in my yard, is it my neighbor's fault or is it my fault? Well, reality, it's really nobody's fault. But in reality, it's my neighbor's responsibility to get up the tree. Thank you very much. It's my neighbor's responsibility to remove the tree. So goodwill men, do the right thing. Remove this statue. God bless you. And pray for my, pray for my family. Yes. Thank you. Next, Mr. Clark. Next, we move to visitors. Mr. Robert Superman Blunt. Hold on, uh, Vice President Dominic. Yeah. One moment. One moment. I, got, I got a motion. I know we got some. Uh, I would make a motion that we move. Go ahead and take Hold this. On. If you are here to speak on the fence, you will be heard at the public hearing section. I said that earlier. So if you are here for the fence, you will be heard during public hearing. You'll be heard during public hearing. Next make a motion that we move our special resolutions up, get those taken care of. Also, that under our visitors, right after that, we have Sheriff Prater and Mrs. Setters, and then presume in a regular order. Second. Second. Uh, all right, there's a motion by Commissioner Dominic to suspend the uh, order of our meeting. Mr. President, if you're gonna do that, you need to probably change Mr. Kelly Wells too. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll add Mr. Wells as well to suspend the rules to bring up Aspect to present our special proclamations and resolutions, as well as bring up the sheriff, Ms. Mrs. Setters, and Kelly Wells. Is there any objection to a suspension of the rule? All right, there's no objection. We will go with our special. Okay, uh, next we'll move to special resolutions. Special resolution recognizing Louisiana State University at Shreveport. 
recognizing their 50th anniversary at LSUS. Y'all stand, please. I'm going to have the reading of the resolution. Chancellor, anybody, I guess, from LSUS? Anybody else affiliated with LSUS? Um, in the name and by the authority of uh, the Cattle Parish Commission, this is a proclamation, uh, Chancellor Clark, whereas the Cattle Parish Commission is pleased to acknowledge the activities and events of note that attend to existence of institutional members of its community, particularly when those entities have in their time made profound and lasting contributions toward the betterment of the parish and its citizens. Whereas in October, on October 15, 1936, Cattle Parish Police Juror Frank Falco Sr. Intend, introduced a resolution to create a branch of LSU in Shreveport, and whereas in, on June 3rd, 1956, State Representative Frank Col Falco Sr. passed a legislative resolution calling, calling on the Louisiana Department of Education to perform a study on the need for a public college in Shreveport. It was determined that Shreveport Cattle Parish not only had the need, but the people of the area yearned for a university. And whereas it is its humble beginnings in 1967, LSUS has become a pivotal force in the upcoming and thriving Shreveport Bossier area. Louisiana State University of Shreveport is recognized as a Title V institution with its stellar faculty and devoted staff. LSUS mission is to educate and promote critical thinking for its well-rounded students. And whereas Louisiana State University for 50 years has proudly provided the foundation of knowledge for students on their journey to succeed and the process they became to become leaders of the past and present and future. Now therefore be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission that it does hereby extend its hardest and most sincere congratulations and best wishes to Louisiana State University Shreveport the Cattle Parish Commission in legal and regular session convened this 21st day of September 2017 celebrates Louisiana State University Shreveport. In recognition of the 50th birthday celebration and in acknowledgement of the ongoing extraordinary contributions made by this institution through which it has reflected much honor, prestige, and pride upon this community, signed by all members of the Cattle Parish Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Jackson and uh, Mr. Milton. Thank you for having been there with us on Monday. This is an important day for us to be recognized by you. Uh, we have another celebration event back on campus right now where we'd have more with us. Uh, this is very important. And I think it's also important that your next agenda item, what you're going to do with Southern University Shreveport, because when these two institutions began, both as community colleges, there really was intent that they were going to be a white and a black. And I've got to tell you today with what we're doing, working with the Southern University and how we want to be working together and the articulation agreements we're making and the collaboration, cooperation. Uh, we were there when the uh, Southern University's uh, Faculty Senate President had her celebration and uh, our Faculty Senate President was there, I was there. Uh, they've been very supportive. Uh, we have for the students who need developmental courses, um, my boss, uh, King Alexander wanted to have it so in the LSU system that uh, all of the remedial courses would be taught by LSU Unis, which is a community college. And I told him, no, we needed a regional, a community solution instead. And uh, Dr. King agreed to waive what he directed initially to allow us to partner with Southern University and Shreveport. And they're providing those courses for us on our campus. And I want you also to know that my first day of being chancellor, on July 1st of 2014, I never went into my office. I was with the alumni and faculty and staff for our breakfast, and then we went out to Southern University. Now, the president, I, the chancellor I saw then is now president of the whole Southern University system, but I took five or six of our senior administrative team. They had five or six of theirs, and at 10 o'clock my first day on July 1st, we got together and we met 
and then in the afternoon at 2 o'clock, I went over to Bojo Parish Community College. Because as a university, LSU Shreveport cannot just simply be as we once began, looking at the students who are in high school coming out. We need to collaborate and work very closely with the community colleges and have a front door for them as well as front door for freshman students. And I've got to tell you that Southern University has absolutely been terrific to work with. And they're a great partner. And uh, I really am glad you're recognizing them. And they should be recognized with us at the same time. I think you should be standing right here, the chancellor, because it's not a priority of an order. I know it's not by how it occurred. But recognizing that both institutions are very, very important to this, this parish and to this city. And so uh, I just want to say to them as well, thank you for what they're doing for us. Thank you for thank this privilege. You, thank you. So, we need to go ahead and adopt that motion. Uh, we can adopt all three after we read them. How about okay. that? All right, that'll work. Uh, next, we can move to resolution recognizing Southern University of Shreveport. If everybody can stand again, please. Okay, it's ready again. I love by the authority of the Cattle Parish Commission, um, whereas the Cattle Parish Commission is pleased to acknowledge the activities and events of note that attend to the existence of institutional members of its communities, particularly when those entities have in their time made profound and lasting contributions toward the betterment of the parish and its citizens. And whereas such an institution is Southern University of Shreveport, Louisiana, which originally opened on September 19th 1967 as a two-year community college to serve the Shreveport Bossier City area. And whereas in 1974, the Louisiana Coordinating Council for Higher Education granted institution the institution approval of six associate degrees in business, office administration, natural science, medical office assistant, social science, and humanities. In 1978, students were able to pursue an associate's degree in medical laboratory technology at Southern University of Shreveport. Many of those students have gone forth to make their marks upon the world while proudly retaining the memories and traditions of the schools that nourished and nurtured them in their formative years. And whereas on September 19th through September 21st, Southern University of Shreveport will celebrate a proud history, a vision, a visionary future in honor of its 50th birthday celebration. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission that it does hereby extend its heartiest and most sincere congratulations and best wishes to Southern University Shreveport and hereby declare and proclaim September 19th through the 21st, 2017 as Southern University Shreveport Louisiana Day in Cattle Parish, Louisiana. In recognition of its 50th birthday celebration and acknowledgement of the ongoing extraordinary contributions made by this institution through which it has been reflected much honor, prestige, and pride upon this community. Signed by all commissioners, all members of the Cattle Parish Commission. President Jackson and all the members of the Cattle Parish Commission, again, thank you for this recognition. Uh, it is truly an honor to be here today and to accept this proclamation uh, for Southern University at Shreveport. Um, I wanted uh, to acknowledge our executive team, uh, mid-level manage management, but most importantly, our students, and so I'm glad that they were able to, to be here. 
we do this uh, for them. And we have a lot of support from faculty, from staff, from administrators to try to support them in a way that will ensure that uh, their dreams become reality. And so we recognize that 50 years ago, we were at a different stage. And uh, obviously, our uh, societal aspirations, our societal landscape, and it's unfortunate that we had to build two separate institutions, LSUS and uh, Southern University of Shreveport, that were one for blacks and one for um, the, the majority race at the time. It's unfortunate that we had to spend taxpayer money to create two separate but equal, supposedly, institutions of higher education. But we're at a different time today, and I think it's important for us to recognize that these students not only at Southern University Shreveport, but at LSUS. And that's why uh, I've partnered with uh, Chancellor Clark. And we've come together to try to make education important for all students. And I think we're at a vital time in our history where it's time to move forward. And it's time to give our students and the students at LSUS and even Bossier Parish a different legacy to move forward. So let's channel that call as we move forward. Thank you for taking this time and honoring us. Again, let's recognize the students. That's what this is all about. You all have a good Any other students want to have any comments? Chancellor? I'm not sure if you're the queen or your SGA wanted to make a quick comment or not, or if you all good. One of the students. <laughs> Say something you briefly. Don't, just very briefly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Let's my name is Zykeia Chambers, and I'm the 50th Miss Southern University at Shreveport 2017-2018, and I'm honored to be here today, so thank you guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Demarcus Dupree, and I'm the 50th SGA President of Southern University at Shreveport, and I'm honored to be here with you today. All right. <laughs> Uh, Vice President Dunn. Yeah, I want to go ahead and second Commissioner Jackson's motion to go ahead and adopt these. I think a protocol that way Commissioner Gage Watts will have the right to make her motion on her other one. Otherwise, it'll kind of read. All uh, right. So there's been a motion and a second to adopt those two resolutions. Please vote on adoption of the resolutions recognizing Southern University and LSUS. And while we're voting, I just want to commend Chancellor Ellis, Chancellor Clark. Thank you guys. Uh, for working together. Uh, our task force is not dead. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it speaks volume uh, of you guys' visions for our higher education institutions here. And so we look forward to working with you both institutions and moving higher education forward here in our local community. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very much All right, 12 0. Uh, All right. Uh, that passes 12 0. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, 12 0. Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. All right, next All right, that passes 12 0. Next, we move to special resolution of recognition to Mr. Curtis Griffin, first of African American certified roofer in Cattle Parish. All right, everybody, please stand. family joining him and I will read the state of Louisiana Parish of Caddo in the name and by the authority of the Caddo Parish Commission resolution of recognition to Mr. Curtis Griffin whereas the Caddo Parish Commission notes with great interest and satisfactions those milestone events that occur in the lives of citizens of Caddo Parish and whereas such an individual as Mr. Curtis Griffin, the first certified African-American roofer in Caddo Parish, 
and whereas Mr. Griffin was recognized on April 6, 2017 with having his story and work put on display as an exhibit at the Louisiana State Museum in Shreveport. And whereas Curtis Griffin, born in Saline, Louisiana, later moving to Shreveport, where he began his career in contracting and roofing. Mr. Griffin built his business on the back of hard work and perseverance, never giving in to the outside pressure of economic, social, or political hardships. And whereas Mr. Griffin's success proves that keeping God first with strong family and friends backing make it possible for us all to break that glass ceiling in whatever industry or vocation we partake. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Caddo Parish Commission this 21st day of September 2017 that it does hereby call upon all citizens of the parish to share in the sense of pride, distinction, and honor that this attainment deserves. Attest Stephen Jackson, President, Doug Dominic, Vice President, Stormy Gage Watts, District 7. All right. <laughs> like to say this, I appreciate everything that y'all have done for me and my daughter there, <laughs> and put God first. All right. Yeah, I wanted to say something. Um, I just wanted to tell you, thank you for coming here today, and uh, I was talking to Commissioner Stormy Gage Watson. Uh, she told me you were like the Ener Energizer Bunner. You, you were still out working and working hard, so keep up the good work. It's a great accomplishment. Thank you for being here today. Right, thank you. Yeah. All right. I think Ms. Watts made the motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gage Watts. Second by Commissioner Bowman. Johnson. Johnson and Bowman. All right. Please vote. Todd, you can flip a coin on who. You don't do that second. Yes, sir. <laughs> that passes 11 0 with one out of the chamber. Time All right. We'll move back to visitors. Mr. Robert Superman Blunt. All right. Uh, but well, we, that's right. We still have a couple items to share. If I right, think. right. Well, uh, I'm going to make a motion on Robert Superman Blunt okay. to postpone his until October 5th. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. okay. All right. And we'll get to it after. We're going to take up. Is that okay? Yeah, we'll take it up after because we're still under the suspension. So, come on, Sheriff Prater. Where's the Sheriff? Oh, he's in. Not You're a hiding letter. back there. Is that a letter from the governor? <laughs> Is that a letter from the governor? You didn't tell them about that. I did. <laughs> I'd like the folks that were just here, you cannot believe how honored I am to be before y'all. Yes, <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I think that many of you had a couple of, or many of you had maybe many questions about the ordinance and the fence or that sort of thing. And so I can either address you and tell you a little bit of background in, in, in a couple of minutes, or I can take your questions, whatever your preference is. Hmm. <coughs> okay, background. All right, is that what you want? Yes, sir. sir. Okay, uh, as you all know, I, I'm, I don't have to tell you this, but I'm the sheriff and the Homeland Security Director because y'all appointed me as such. A part of my job, or the bulk of my job probably is to who is to do everything I can do to make sure the citizens of Kettle Parish have a safe and healthy environment in which to live, and that's just what I got to do, and that's 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 just my job. The situation that we find ourselves in now is that we have a building, the courthouse, that has thousands of visitors a week, and these thousands of visitors, you have people that don't want to be there that got summoned. You have prisoners that get hauled in and, and have to go to court there. You have judges, you have law enforcement officers, and then you have people that have domestic violence issues or cases. You have domestic filings, divorces, child support. You have all these sorts of things. You have dope trials where you have actually informants 
and you have witnesses coming and you have defendants and they're leaving at the same time and so you have all of these different folks that are coming to a building and they're put in there together and they don't and can't have a firearm everybody knows it they can't take a gun in there they're searched and everything else the second they open that door and step on the grounds of the courthouse the steps of the courthouse people out there can open carry you talk about hunting over a baited field if if i wanted to harm someone my domestic spouse or or, or my spouse or a boyfriend girlfriend if i wanted to shoot a witness or an informant or a co-defendant if i was just crazy and wanted to shoot somebody the place to do it's there they don't have guns in there nobody gonna shoot you back because of the fact that we have a no ordinance prohibiting firearms on the courthouse grounds we do in the courthouse we secure the courthouse you know that because we have a contractual agreement for the doors and the hallways and we have a statutory obligation to do that because of the law and in the courtrooms once outside on the grounds there is no such there is no such obligation that we do it and so the city of Shreveport the police department has an obligation because it's the city of Shreveport and when we're there which is just during the open hours we assist also but it's very difficult without the ordinance without some sort of some sort of mechanism whereby we can keep people from open carrying firearms this was brought to light about 18 months ago maybe two years ago and I sent you a letter about it whereby we had folks down there demonstrating and this particular group had Confederate flags and they wanted to walk around the courthouse grounds y'all's property with Confederate flags and open carry they were carrying rifles they had uh, 45 automatic pistol, semi-automatic pistols they had they had all sorts of things walking around with flags on the courthouse grounds and it cost us sixteen thousand dollars in overtime for that one little demonstration that they had after that's when I sent another letter to you all saying that we're, we're not gonna do this anymore we're not going to I'm not going to for the safety of my deputies put them up against groups that come down there that are openly demonstrating and carrying firearms just not gonna do it and so from there and over the years I've asked that an ordinance be passed for at least two things one is prohibiting guns to be carried that close to where we have such justice meted out and the people get together the second thing is to prevent 24-hour access the 24-hour access is to keep people from uh, bombing or putting bombs in the bushes around the courthouse we've got one of the worst places in the world that you could come out of a building and where people could hide or hide anything they wanted whether it be guns it could be explosives it could be anything and so also you could hide there and go to the bathroom as <laughs> you all know uh, because we've much has been said about the defecation and the and the urination and the trashing of the courthouse grounds that occurs at night and so that's the two things that I'm telling you as the sheriff that you need to get a handle on is carrying guns that close to victims and that close to defendants and informants and judges and law enforcement officers and the fact that there's something needs to be done about 24-hour access to a very secure building but with all sorts of unsecured uh, property meaning the bushes and trees and grass and and pillars and everything else that might be there it was mentioned that there was a uh, that it had something to do with the Confederate another speaker the Confederate monument that's the only thing that is fenced in uh, there's a fence around it so the gentleman the gentleman spoke protected was, was a little bit wrong it's got some sort of fence around it so uh, this has nothing to do with that and and we're not getting into that uh, this just has to do with my job to bring this up to you that has to do with the ordinance without some sort of way to close it at night 
<coughs> then there's no way to prevent the 24-hour access. It's as simple as that. There are other benefits that the fence would have. The benefits of if there is some sort of a rally or demonstration within the fence, a, a short wrought iron fence would keep a car from, from going at full speed into the crowd. We've all heard of that happening. Let's face it, these are the, these are the different days than we used to have. I know we all say, you know, when the courthouse was built, or I remember when I grew up, I used to walk around down there, and it was so much fun, and uh, it's so pretty. I went down there this last Sunday after church and rode around there, and you had eight people sound asleep on the benches. Uh, one of them had moved, actually moved in. I've got pictures of it all sent to some of y'all, I think. I may not have. Actually moved into one of the benches. Uh, there was no place for them to go to the bathroom, and you had three young tourists, I assume, because one of them had a camera around their neck, and they were walking down. It was embarrassing for Shreveport, embarrassing for Caddo Parish. Now, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not that, it's, it's not Steve Prater's fence. I, I keep hearing, you know, the sheriff wants a fence. I'm just bringing this problem up to y'all. Right. This fence you know, there, there's a lot of advantages to this fence. I'm telling you it's an unsafe and unhealthy environment down there right now, the way that it is. Homeless folks and mentally ill people, I know they don't have a place to stay or they choose not to stay where they're supposed to stay. I know all that. But are we obligated to, to supply them a place in the bushes to go to the bathroom? Have we gotten to that stage? and to cause the people that are employees of y'all's to have to go pick up this human feces every day because we don't want a, a, a fence. I'm not talking about a cyclone fence with razor ribbon on top of it or some, something like at the library. Right. There needs to be some, if you're gonna make it a 24 hour, if you're gonna shut it down at particular hours, then you gotta have some way of letting people know where the grounds are, where they can stay on the sidewalk, but not, otherwise there's no way to enforce it. I, I got a lot of friends that are against it. I got a lot of friends that are for it. I'm not gonna get my panties in a wad either way. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that, that this, is the, this is the way that you're, the only way that you're gonna be able to secure it 24 hours a day is to have some sort of a barrier down there. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I see Commissioner Bowman on first. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff, I recall you years ago bringing this up even before, like you said, the Confederate Monument, all of this. And would you say that most courthouses in the city of our size and the parish or county of our size have, have already have a fence around their courthouse? No, sir, I wouldn't have any way of knowing. Someone okay. told me that most didn't. Uh, I don't know if, but every, every environment is different. Correct. And all you got to do is look at ours and see. Any sheriff that would come into Caddo Parish would look at our situation. And I believe that, uh, I won't say sheriff, but I, I believe that any law enforcement, professional law enforcement officer or leader would tell you that something, you know, you need something. Right. And uh, so it sounds like to me, being that you're the professional, you're the person that we've allowed to be in this position that people have voted for, um, you wouldn't just come to us unless it was necessary and you've given us the facts about the 24 hour, preventing the 24 hour access and safety issue. So it sounds like to me that this fence is something that's really been long overdue. Yes, sir. Uh if you want to hang it around my neck that much, uh, <laughs> put it around your neck. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not scared, and, and you know that. Yes, and, sir. Uh, so I don't mind. I'm just telling you that, that my job is to tell you what's safe right. and what's what I think is needed. But there's other issues, and I respect you if you vote not to do it. Or you know, it's uh, if you say not to that that uh, you don't mind people getting hurt and. and crapping on the no. courthouse lawn, then that's fine. But, no. I mean, something got to give, and I know that, you know, something, something needs to be done. There may be some other solutions, and I'm right. certainly open to the other solutions and suggestions. That, you know, I'm not dead set on this, but I'm telling you, this is what, 
this is what needs to be done. As far as I, I hear everything from the first, this is a violation of our First Amendment rights. Well, I'm trying to figure out how a fence keeps somebody from having a First Amendment right. I mean, you can stand on the sidewalk and say all you want. Your First Amendment doesn't say you can go anywhere you want. Yes, sir. And so, I, I don't know. I'm not fussing and fighting with anybody. And like I say, it's, uh, it's right. up to y'all. But I guess my point I'm trying to make is, and what I've observed, since I know that this is not the first time, I, um, you won't come down, you won't request something unless it's necessary and, and protect. And so this is not nothing that's just come up with the Confederate monument. This is something that you've already said for years about that we dropped in committee and everything else uh, just to, for our protection and for the citizens. And you're looking, it sounds like, um, ahead to be proactive instead of us being reactive. Is that right? Yes, sir. You, you, we don't. Well, I mean, we've already found guns in the bushes. Okay. Uh, we already know that there's. We live in such a polarized society. I don't have to tell anybody that. It's it's awful. People are fine to believe what they want to believe, and I think that's great. You know, we encourage that in the sheriff's office. I don't care who you vote for, what you except for me. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of encourage the deputies to vote for me, but everybody else they work for. You know, you got a right to believe whatever you want, whether you like Confederate flags or you don't right. like them, whether you like open carry guns or don't like them, like legalized marijuana, or don't like legalizing marijuana. I don't care. It doesn't matter if you're a man and likes another man or a, you know, I don't care. Yes, sir. You know, it, but we, but my job is to keep folks safe. And that's what I see this as. And if, if there's other overriding interests, or suggestions, I certainly will listen to them. But I think we're foolish not to do something about a problem that has stared us in the face for so long. I agree. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Uh, Vice President Dominic. Yeah, I just, um, you, before I press the button, you, you answer a lot of my questions. You're talking about the changing of the times and also the vehicles. Um, and you, each of y'all know that every month, at least every month, we get a letter from you that says, what y'all have confiscated at the um, courthouse. And, I mean, I'm just writing down razor, guns, knife, nunchucks, brass knuckles. Daily. Uh, mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff that's just even been brought in there. Um, your, your deputy, when we met at the Long Range uh, Committee, I mean, I think one Captain of the Jones. things that... Captain, Captain Jones. Jones, yeah. The, the big statement that he made was, and I'm pretty much quoting it, it's a not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we know that the judge just got shot a few months ago. I can't remember what parish or county or state, but Florida. Was it Florida? Um, I hate to see that happen. This is something that's been ongoing. Uh, you know, the fence, the drawing that we've looked at, that Kevin came up with, it looked like to me it would be something that would be adequately and nice. Pleasing to the eye, uh, you're missing the best world. Nothing would be there, but like you said, it's a changing time. Uh, you're the Homeland Security Director. I was president when we got to appoint you to that. Yeah. You're the sheriff, you're the expert. Uh, you and I met, you and I talked. You told me that this is your suggestion and something's got to be done. So. I'm agreeable with you. I uh, appreciate you coming here today. Yes, sir. I'll let other commissioners ask you questions. Maybe they have something. I would just reiterate what you said. It's unsafe, unhealthy. It's not just people going to the bathroom. It's, it's, it's numerous things. Unsafe, unhealthy, the demonstrator issues, the possible terrorist issues, bombs, guns, all of those things that's led us to what we're doing today. I know people are not going to be happy if we vote for this fence. Um, but I know everybody is, but we've got to kind of go with what you're saying, in my opinion, to try to make our citizens safe and those who work at the court. Okay, um, Commissioner Chavez. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff, thanks for coming down. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you had a hard task to, to do to come down here. I appreciate you. One thing I wanted to ask, and I don't know if, if this is something that you can answer or maybe the uh, legal, if we deemed the courthouse grounds a park, would that uh, help you uh, as far as legislatively to enforce uh, no overnight stay, so to speak, on the grass? Yes, sir. And uh, 
Yes, sir, that'd be fine. We, that's one of the suggestions we had quite some time ago. The park would give you closing hours. It would give you no alcohol, no, uh, no firearms. Um, that's basically what we're interested in. Well, okay, uh, it is, is that's just something we can legislate up here and, and, and it's done. It's on the agenda right Perfect. now. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. That's all, President. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Sheriff, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And um, um, I think that safety is unquestionably a priority for all of us. As we've identified, there are many other concerns. Um, you've identified as we know that you are the director of our homeland security and if we are willing to um, trust you and to give you the responsibility of protecting and deciding what's best for our region and our homeland if you would then I think it's not unreasonable to uh, trust you to do the same as it relates to our parish or our city um, there was some we received some correspondence uh, from someone who have great respect for who made the same quote of if it's uh, that it's not a matter of if, but when, and some disagree with that. Uh, with my background in training um, and public safety, uh, there's a rule that we normally go by, and that rule is that if it's predictable, it's preventable. Hmm. If it's predictable, it's preventable. And when we look throughout the nation, look throughout uh, other regions <coughs> in similar situations, um, it is predictable what can happen. And um, in teaching emergency, um, in emergency training, we all believe that, we know that bad things happen. We just always tend to think that they happen somewhere else. Well, we know that, that it can happen here. And if it can happen here, then can it be prevented? And I think that it can. So uh, based on your role and what you are tasked to do and your professionalism and just overall history, I think we'd be wise to uh, consider your recommendation as it relates to it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Atkins. Sheriff, thank you so much for coming down today. We appreciate yes, it. Sir. We appreciate your advice and, and all you do for Cato Parish. I just want to make sure that you did see that on our agenda today for introduction, we do have the um, a regulation to regulate the activity on the ground. So that's certainly yes. a good first step yes, and sir. something that's that, that has been uh, delayed too long. So we hopefully we'll get that moving. And then, of course, we have the fence ordinance as well. But I wanted to make sure you knew that we were addressing the uh, activity issue. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I knew that. I was told by Mr. Jackson. <laughs> thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner thank Milt. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Sheriff, for coming down. And uh, with 35.79 years, who's counting? But 35.79 years for the sheriff's office. Probably 25 of that I worked out of the courthouse. And I, some of the things that are occurring now, I've been seeing them happen since 1979. And y'all may not be familiar with the uh, see, registrar voters used to be. There's some stairs that go down. It's a blind area. You can't see from the street. And then there's another one on the other side, and I won't tell you what that goes to. But anyhow, it is areas we don't want to be compromised. And I think by having a fence completely around the courthouse square, it's going to deny some opportunities so that are there if we don't do something. So I wholeheartedly support a good, nice, aesthetic fence uh, to take care of this, to help address this, and to uh, for public safety. Public safety. When we've got short on public safety, let's don't do it on this one, folks. We'll do something else. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyhow, thank you so much, like you can, Sheriff. Thank Thanks, Mr. President. That's it. I heard Commissioner Milton talking about the dog, the dog kennel giving the ticket again, so you might want to. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> Sheriff Crater, if, if the fence passes, um, is it your intention to station guards at the entrance to keep people from bringing guns into within the fence so that if they were to shoot, you know, once inside the fence, is there, is there a goal to put guards outside? No, sir, sure. there's not. And so someone could still bring guns inside the fence. They couldn't open carrying them in there. And they also, if they were found to have them once inside before they did anything, or if they were acting suspicious, by the entrance and just loitering or hanging around and it was apparent that they needed to be talked to and we found a gun in their pocket, that'd be a violation of the law. Whereas if they were doing that and, and the ordinance doesn't pass, it, they just keep act suspicious. But with the park setting, they could, they could still not have a gun, but in concealed carry or open carry. They couldn't have it either way. With the park setting? Yes. Okay. 
Jeff, do you want to close? Or you want no, to say I want to go. Turn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate y'all, and, and I like the banner and tease with y'all. I have great respect for each and every one of you, and your different opinions about things. This, like I said, this is uh, this is just an issue we need to deal with, and up or down, and, and get on. Uh, we can always maybe we could make a dog park out of it if we can. <laughs> Might be no. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mrs. Sims. And this is in regards to the detailed progress Correct. reports. Correct. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Um, thank you for your time. And I was asked to come down and just give you an update kind of on what we're doing this year. And uh, to, is, with regard to the hotel motel tax, um, as was legislated by our leadership, that uh, money goes straight into a fund and is used strictly for, for team payouts, and that's still the case and will be the case. Uh, we've been planning for the bowl this year since February, and we've added some events this year. We have about 20 events on the schedule this year that started in March, and we'll go through all the, all the way through the day after the bowl this year. And uh, of those 20 events, we've added some new ones this uh, Kid Combine, which is a, it's, it's an NFL style combine for little kids um, or youth, and we started that this year at Crawfest, and then we also had it two days in a row at Wheels in the Hills, and we'll be doing it at Celebrate Barksdale in a few weeks in October over at Barksdale Air Force Base. We also um, we had a series of meetings with some uh, people from the community early on in March and April, and we sat down and had some brainstorming sessions with them to try to figure out what to do to reinvent some of the events and reinvent the bowl game. Outside of the team matchups, which is something that really isn't in our control, we can do different things with the events. So we sat down with people from uh, different age groups and demographics in the area and said, you know, what would make it better, what would make it more fun. We also engaged with an a new advertising agency this year, so hopefully you've seen a lot more social media presence. And starting next month, you'll see a lot more advertising with traditional media, too. Um, one of the things that we came away with was, you know, you've got to get a younger demographic engaged. And so we're working on that. We're adding, uh, we announced it last week, we're adding a concert in the Red River District this year that'll take place the night before the game. So we'll start with a pep rally and a, and a uh, parade over at the boardwalk. We'll have a, a pub crawl that's going on on the Shreveport side that starts about the same time. The two schools' bands will travel over to the Shreveport side and uh, we'll have a battle of the bands under the bridge in the Red River District. And then immediately following that, we're going to have a concert outside there. So we're working with um, the people who are in the district who have businesses there and local vendors and local catering companies to, uh, to try to create, if any of y'all remember, like the rally in the alley days, we're trying to recreate that and start that this year. And uh, so we've, uh, our game is on December 27th this year, and that is a day later than it has been the last two years which is good because it gives people from out of town an extra day to travel. So we're not asking them to travel on Christmas Day, and hopefully we get more hotel nights out of that also. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Missy, for coming down. And if I can hear you correct, what you said is y'all do plan to have a game yes, this year. Yes, we will, we will have a game this year. Okay. Um, Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. Missy. Yes, sir. Um, are we still locked into the same two conferences? Or? We are. We're still in with the ACC and the SEC and Conference USA and the American are the two backup conferences through 2019. Our ESPN agreement is solid. It's contractually obligated through 2019 also. And our national radio partners through 2019. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, what about, do you want a, uh, the title sponsorship issue? The search is ongoing, and we are reasonably hopeful at this point that we're going to have a title sponsor. Okay. Um, and with regard to a, a local sponsorship, uh, I was at a, uh, I believe, Captain Shreve Calvary game. Mm -hmm. Do y'all do sort of an RFP for events that y'all are going to sponsor with those local high school teams, or do y'all do a blanket sponsorship for all of those teams, or how do y'all go about Typically, if they come a game last week and didn't see it. If they contact us, um, we'll, we'll try to work with them on signage partnerships or something like that. We've done them in the past where we have signage in the stadiums or we'll have radio partnerships. Okay. Um, what about uh, sort of, I think we're working on community, getting the community sort of to buy into the game. Is there any efforts to get the community to buy into the game or we like giving 
tickets to the Boy Scouts or something like that. Uh, I do I do recall. Uh, I think the mayor's office gets X amount of just general admission tickets. Could y'all take those tickets and and say, hey, instead of giving them to the mayor's office, we're gonna give them out to these civic groups that deal with kids. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we we have a group rate that we started this year that if you buy uh, particularly end zone seats. They're typically uh, $30, and what we've done this year is if it's a group of 20 or more, we'll discount those tickets to $15 each, which is the cheapest ticket you can get for a bowl game in the country, I believe. And uh, so we do try to work with, with nonprofits in particular and, uh, and with the military. We have some donation programs where people will buy tickets, and they will donate them back to us and designate who they would like those tickets to go to. And we also have a kid's corner you ticket donation program that we do the same it's the same type process so there is an effort to try to get the local because you hear this yes you know, sir and in in particular the the um, social media campaign has been geared to getting word out because we heard loud and clear last year and we didn't see it either I, people didn't know the game was going on um, we didn't see commercials where we should have seen commercials so we've we've engaged with a different partner and uh, I know the social presence has been much better. Yeah, I, I was at the Highland Jazz and Blues Festival and checked in on Facebook and somebody asked, I didn't know that was going on this weekend, so I don't know and how we you, had we had a table there. <laughs> I don't know how you ever get around that one. Uh, did anybody have, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Bowman, I'm sorry. Uh, you actually, um, Commissioner Johnson actually answered my question and you did. I just want to say, I'm, I tell you personally, but I know it's been challenging, but I just want to tell you just, for what you do um, for years, I knew about you with my mom and stuff, and I know you work very hard, and the team does. So I just want to commend you to keep your head up and keep going, and hopefully if there's something we can do, and that's just not talk. If you need our presence or something, if you need mine, it's in my district. So I definitely um, commend you and support you in the way I can. I appreciate that, and you know your mom is very dear to my heart. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any yeah, other uh, Commissioner Kaufman? Yeah, I appreciate you coming down, uh, Missy. Uh, we know there's a lot of concern, a lot of talk about the bowl, the future of the bowl. But as an individual who's been working in this bowl arena for a number of years, can you find own edification? I think sometimes we kind of operate in a vacuum in the local community. Uh, can you just, for our edification, give us just a, a broad perspective of what's going on with the bowls around the nation and so that we get an understanding that what challenges we, we have are just not unique to Shreveport. No, not at all. Uh, I, th I think there's been a, a dramatic shift in the bowl landscape in the last probably three to four years. You now have 39 bowl games and uh, you know one, one closed up operations just a few months ago in another market and they still have a bowl game there. But what you've seen is a proliferation of bowl games in some communities where they'll have three and four bowl games in an area. So obviously they see the value in those and uh, in an existing organization will take on an additional one. So you're at th 39 bowl games plus one championship game. With the, uh, with the advent of the playoff, it changed the landscape a bit. But what you see now is uh, the last couple of years, you've had some five and seven teams that were in bowl games. Now the good thing about that is, is that when you have a five and seven team, it's based on APR. That's how they qualify, which is the academic performance record for a school. So it's not just a five and seven team that's getting in, it's one that has really strong academics. Um, so from that standpoint, you've got a lot more competition for title sponsors, you've got a lot more competition for teams, and you've got a lot more competition for conference matchups and alignments. I think next spring you're probably going to see a lot of that come to a head with, with some new rules that the NCAA is going to institute as far as um, how deep conferences can go in their alignments with bowl games. And that will trickle down from the top conferences all the way down. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And this may be a question that Kelly will get to, but I don't know if y'all discussed it. It's possibly maybe trying to you know, venture into a sort of kickoff classic and a bowl. Have y'all had any discussions about that? We, we have been in discussions before about ideas, uh, and I've mentioned before too, I think that we would, we would like to have a kickoff game. We have to get, a, get to a point of stability to be able to do it. And the, you know, there's a difference in, in asking a team to move a home game to your stadium as opposed to having a true kickoff game, which is a, um, it's a, uh, it's not a home game for either one. So it's an offsite game. And so there's a different structure to both of those. But yes, we would like to add a game in the future, absolutely. Any other questions for Ms. Sarah? Okay. okay. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah. Hunter, so thank you for, for your efforts. I never really thought about the kickoff 
um, approach. But you would look at a kickoff game and a ball game. It seems like you know, with there being so much activity at the end of the season with all these bowl games, is there an opportunity to move the effort into just a kickoff uh, game? You know, when when the season is new and fresh and lots of energy, is is there is there a market opportunity there? Have you all thought about that? I think you're better off if you try to add it. And the reason is a bowl game is is a completely different structure than uh, than a kickoff game because a kickoff game you're getting um, in a normal year you're getting one hotel night, maybe two out of the teams. Whereas for a bowl game, you're getting four. So I don't know that you necessarily want to make that trade. It's better to add it from an economic impact standpoint, because especially. Because there's more festivities and all around the bowl game? Right. OK, thank you. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much for See, your time. We don't, we don't bite. I don't know why people think we're going to bite your head off when we come <laughs> Thank <down>. you. <laughs> thank you. And you got a meeting to go to, uh, yes. uh, bowl meet. So appreciate you, Mr. Keller. Well. Thank you, President Jackson and uh, commissioners and Dr. Wilson and team. And uh, I was just thinking as uh, Sheriff Prater was mentioning the uh, courthouse grounds, it's kind of like clean up after a couple of our sporting events we've had. Or, or uh, <laughs> the, uh, I just want to kind of update you guys on what's going on. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ken Ante, who's one of our appointees uh, that's represented the Caddo Commission very well. And over the last few years, and I know that uh, you've know, got uh, Lyndon Johnson, uh, Commissioner Johnson, coming on board, and I know he we've had some conversations and he things of that be. nature. He might be. Coming. Might be. He's got a photo. <laughs> I just was reading over the agenda today. I know he's got that tech shirt on, so I don't know shot. if that's going to help him or hurt him today. <laughs> but I, I first of all wanted to thank my team, uh, who's really helps make a lot of this happen, and they don't get to come to a lot of these meetings. But we've got a uh, John Cadero. Who's our sponsorship director? And we've got Cable and Douglas, who's our sales manager, and Sheila Norman, who's our uh, administrator, handles all the operations, and then Teresa Michaels, who's our services and, and volunteer coordinator. Of course, we've got Stacy Brown, who's here, who's the president of the Tourist Bureau, and also a voting member <coughs> and my immediate boss. But uh, we really appreciate the support and the efforts over the last few years. Uh, we've been doing this for about six years now. And uh, we really feel like we're getting more and more successful as we learn more and more about that. And um, I believe we've got a list of, of some of the events that we've been involved with this year. And you know we're on track to do something similar for next year. In fact, we've been planning over the last couple of days. And uh, there's a lot of great things that are coming our way. I mentioned Teresa and the volunteers. You know, we work with approximately 960 volunteers a year and that may not sound like a lot but that's about over 5,000 hours uh, that are dedicated to these events and it really helps out not only with our bottom line but also the bottom line of these 50 plus sporting events that we're involved with. Uh, John Cadero we added uh, last October and when we got this tax pass you know a couple years with y'all's help one of the things that was really important and that several of y'all mentioned was let's make sure that we don't just rely on tax dollars and so uh, last year and this year uh, we'll generate close to half a million dollars in sponsorships ticket revenues trade partnerships again not to generate more money for the sports commission but to allow us to have more events larger events and also the community support is really important you know in moving forward with that in fact I've I look around at each of the commissioners, and I know uh, Commissioner Middleton saw him bright and early many mornings during the balloon rally, and <laughs> I know Commissioner Atkins helped out uh, some with that, and uh, we're hoping to get him out early to, to take part in some of the balloons. And even Todd Hopkins, when I call him, you know, we'll have, you know, promotion's a big part of it. In February, we'll have Louisiana Sportsman, which is the number one magazine out, doing a story on duck hunting, Caddo Lake. And so I called up, and again, it's always been whatever we've needed. Uh, you guys have really been partners. I know we canceled out the Powerboat Nationals, but Mario Chavez, his second job is a professional uh, hydro fuller. But again, it really takes a team to, to be involved with these events. And you know, again, with so many events, pretty much every weekend of the year, uh, numerous venues around both parishes. And really one of our goals, and this just came out uh, from staff this week, is to really go out and seek in the rural areas. Uh, I know Greenwood just had a bass tournament this past weekend, and 
Uh, we're working on a large outdoor archery tournament that we feel like will only be able to fit in a rural area. So we've looked at the uh, uh, Ward Industrial Park as a potential opportunity. The tax that was passed, uh, I get that question some, and so year to date, and again, this is our first uh, full year, uh, we're at $401,000 is our third of, of the share of the tax that's split between the Independence Bowl and RASA. Uh, we feel like we'll end the year with about $540,000. And again, those dollars are all strictly going to sporting events, bringing them in. Uh, one thing that the board voted on in, in January, and again, our board makeup is two appointees from Cattle Parish, two from Bossier Police Jury, two from the City of Shreveport, two from the City of Bossier, Stacy, and then Billy Montgomery, who y'all, each of the entities voted on to kind of see over everything. But one thing that was really important to prepare for larger events that come our way is we put about 35% of those tax dollars into a reserve fund. And those dollars cannot be touched. And again, it'll potentially be about $165,000 a year. But that's for larger events that, you know, sporting events, the larger they are, sometimes the more they cost. And so we really feel like that's important. Something else that we uh, implemented this year you know, because in the last few years it would be sitting down, having lunch, visiting with folks, but there really wasn't a process in place to, to fund these sporting events because there's a lot of sporting events out there that don't necessarily need our volunteers. You know, they may need our, need our PR. They may need us to send out hotel leads to the different areas. But we had now have a formal process that we put in about $93,000 this year that will probably be close to being used at the max. Um, but that's a great opportunity where we can send that out when somebody's interested. And again, that's something that y'all can share with others. And that's those uh, funding uh, partnerships have ranged from, I believe, 800 is the least amount and up. And so, you know, I think we've funded up to, I think, maybe 15,000 uh, through those based on the opportunity. But there's a lot of requirements, you know, that really fit that bill. And again, the three overall goals for our area, first of all, you know, sports and tourism is the third biggest industry in the state of Louisiana, especially with the oil and gas and what it's doing. Um, we feel like that can continue to grow. Again, you know, that, with the venues, that's something that, you know, we have to have the venue. You know, we can't really go after cross skiing, you know, cross country skiing, but we have been really good at going out there and finding those venues, utilizing the Red River. Uh, we've got a large uh, bass fishing tournament this weekend that's bringing in 150 mm -hmm. uh, colleges from all over the area. That's good. But we don't just rely on the bass fishing. We do the powerboat nationals. Of course, that got canceled. We're still at the mercy of nature with any venue that we partner with. And so we're really getting our eyes out there to find out what's going on, getting creative. And again, the community, some of our best leads have came from the community. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Uh, but again, that's one of our our uh, opportunities, the economic impact, but a lot of these events also provide a really good quality of life for our citizens. And we get really good support from the cities and the parishes. And then the partnerships, again, the sponsorships, you know, are a great part of it. Um, and we've had all different types of sponsorships that may be volunteer time, you know, money, uh, providing the venue, you know, in partnership, just, you know, media helping out, even going out and helping us sell trade you know, and, and cash sponsorships, which helps their bottom line as well. And lastly, to continue to grow the events and opportunities in our region. And so we really feel like we're doing a good job, you know, with that. We're still learning. Uh, we're still making some mistakes every now and then, but we try to correct our mistakes um, and move forward with it and make it better. And so that's kind of where we're at. And uh, I didn't know if y'all had any questions for me. I don't, I don't see any. Kelly? Uh, appreciate you coming here today. Thank you for your report and uh, good luck with anything we must let us know, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Board. Thanks, okay. um, Commissioner, hang on. Kelly, Kelly, hang on. I just have one question. Uh, Commissioner Grady Watts. Thank you. Um, you're doing a great job. However, you said that you're still learning some things, so I just want to give this to you to put in your blanket. I see that um, you said that a few commissioners have been called out to some of the events that were in their district. I see. Um, at least two on here that are in my district and I had never been invited. I like sports too. So please don't leave me off of that list when you're inviting commissioners to come out. I'll be happy to be there to support you. Okay. Thank Love you. To. That's it. Thank you, Kelly. <coughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. All right.
All right, so there's a motion to go back in the regular order. So moved. Move. Moved by second. Commissioner Gage Watt, second by Commissioner Glenn Cox, going to go back into the regular order. Is there any objection to going back into regular order? All right. All right next, we go to the Commission Citizens and Tax Board of Review for Tax Assessments for 2017. How you doing? Yeah, we met uh, Monday and talked about personal property appeals. We had Prime Master and Aaron's. Uh, we have two real estate appeals that were pending. Pivotal could not come on Monday, nor are they here today. They uh, emailed me yesterday, said they would not be here. They withdrew Promise Hospital, but they still have one for Group One Auto. Okay. Um, I'm asking you to uphold our assessments. Um, for those two pieces of property. Okay, Commissioner Lynn. Moved to uphold the tax assessors. Second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Gates. Watch, please vote on upholding the uh, tax assessor. Mm -hmm. And also, when the, you'll need to approve the same for the personal property accounts also. Moved to approve. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Gage Watts to uh, approve the personal property uh, recommendation by the tax assessor. Okay. <coughs> Sorry for the wait, Mr. Harrington. No, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's good to watch it in person than on TV. That's correct. <laughs> All right, sure, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next, we move to adopt regular session minutes for September 7th. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner John Atkins. Uh, please vote on adoption of the regular session minutes. Time the game, sir. Booker T versus Woodlawn. <laughs> or Woodlawn versus nobody. Okay, the night. <laughs> that passes 12 0. Next, we move to public hearing on ordinances. Ordinance number 57 12, amending the budget investment revenues and expenditures for the capital outlay fund and the general fund in the amount of 200000 to provide an appropriation to place a fence or bollards with portable fencing around the parish courthouse. All right, uh, Mr. Kenneth Kreff. Sorry for the Thank wait, guys. No, that's fine. That's how we I, do it. 5712 Kenneth Greff 157 Archer Avenue even though y'all don't require that City Council is ingrained Commissioner Johnson said what's true if it's predictable it's preventable it's predictable that some of the problems that sheriff outlined have happened are happening and will happen having said that I'm against the fence unless y'all designate the grounds of park and he can hire park rangers or but right now a fence is 20 million pennies for what purpose i don't think it will achieve the desired end it will partially achieve the desired end but going back to what lewis said uh, hurricanes are predictable and earthquakes and fires and tornadoes and the sheriff doesn't agree with me but i've said this for 35 years we have a 9-11 center that's vulnerable to a tornado and being destroyed and we'd rather put up a fence than have a fireproof flood proof tornado proof 9-11 center Miami got theirs destroyed built a new one after Andrew uh, it didn't get phased by Irma their new 9-11 center just water off the ducks back but back to the fence it might work hmm. uh, I don't think it will without tighter controls over the grounds within the sidewalk and I think I know why the bushes are so healthy when you walk in it's all that crap in the bushes fertilizer hmm. Uh, Maxine Davis. Am I missing anything? <laughs> Good okay. evening, and thank you for uh, having us have me speak. Uh, we respect Chef Prater's uh, position, and we would like, as Interfaith, we would like to work with him on other issues. But I understand the fence will cost two hundred thousand dollars. The fence will not solve the problem, and is the fence the only option? I think we should think outside of the box and come up with another solution. $200,000 is a lot of money for a bandage that would not solve a problem. 
it really would be an eyesore to downtown, and we would like it to have be beautiful. We are trying to bring people to the downtown area, and I think having a fence would be an eyesore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. My name is Maxine Davis, 4458 Fairway. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bobby Edwards. I reside at 4650 Lakeshore Drive in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm uh, representing the Interfaith Group of Louisiana. Uh, we are strongly opposed the idea of a fence around the uh, courthouse. Does this fence prevent emergency evacuations? Have anybody actually accepted their questions? If you had terrorists guard that fence on both sides, would you be able to penetrate and get in and secure everybody safely? Ask yourself that question. Hmm. When George Jartaz was chief of uh, Shreveport Police Department, he was sort of like a no-nonsense chief of police. He wouldn't tolerate the uh, stuff that we have downtown, people sleeping all over the sidewalks. And we know that because he used to chase us off the sidewalk and make sure we're in the house at night. Okay? The alleged 2000 $200,000 fence in front of the courthouse causes an eyesore for downtown decor. Going into the Air Force in 1970, I joined the Air Force downtown on Texas Avenue. Uh, we haven't put much paint on the building since I got back. This is 2017. Maybe we need to use some of that money to paint downtown, make it look better. We're trying to compete with other cities, so let's compete. Example, homeless people will be using this fence for an advantage to hang their clothes on the fence like a laundry clothesline. Also changing their, bi chaining their bicycles to the fence, chaining their personal belongings to the fence, using the fence as a tent for security, sitting down on the sidewalk, leaning their back up against the fence because you don't have a fence to block them from leaning their back up against the fence at this present time. We need to remodify the grounds. We need to move all the scrubberies around the buildings where anybody can hide, uh, maybe use the bathrooms on our grounds. We need to prevent ourselves a little bit better than that. If we got bushes up there, move them. Uh, sometime when I come down here and talk to the council, I have to realize whether my glass is half full or half empty. Huh. This is an alleged mound can be used for street drainage sewage repair. Okay, this fence serves as a, uh, no purpose but to hide the courthouse in the surrounding area, surrounding areas. Beauty should not be hidden from anybody. This is the natural beauty of downtown, our courthouse. Think about it for a minute. Our courthouse is right in the middle of downtown. It is a natural beauty. And I think a fence will block that. We got to look at all security aspects as Steve Prater just told us that he's very interested in security. And that's, that's very important. So let's keep that in mind. The question is why we need a fence. Our control factors should be better than that. Keeping who in and keeping who out. Let's all think of a better reason to use our money in the future. Thank you and may God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barbara Jarrell. It's forever. Thank you all for letting us speak today. It's good. It's good. Uh, I'm not sure what the height of the short wrought iron fence is that they were talking about, but if it's actually short, then there are a whole list of other problems six that six feet is not six short. Feet. But um, Okay. Uh, um, the sheriff talked about the bushes being a problem, and it seems to me it would cost a whole lot less to take the bushes out than to put a fence around them. And if the ends of the building were um, vulnerable to fence just just the ends of the building so that the vulnerable areas were less accessible, but not the whole visual of the building, for things like films that we try to draw to Shreveport are not going to want to wreck the period look of the building by putting fences up. The homeless problem exists in every city in this country, and it's not going to go away. Putting a fence up isn't going to address that problem, and the need for people to have access to some sort of solution for their natural physical needs is going to remain whether there's a fence there or not. 
So the fence doesn't address the, the, uh, the, the needs of the people that are creating the problem. Um, it, I, I was concerned about the access that I think um, Commissioner Chavez raised, or, or, or Commissioner Lynn brought that up. Um, and I thank you all for asking those questions. Um, I think that our, that our desire is to be a city that um, serves to welcome people. And I think to have the appearance that um, justice is accessible and that the people here are, are welcome is important for us. I don't think putting a fence around the courthouse will do that. And I thank you for all the, the other comments. I've already expressed all my other thoughts. And uh, I appreciate your service. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Susan Ventiker. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize. My name is Susan Bettinger. I live at 3814 Presswell Avenue in Shreveport. I had occasion a, a few years ago to uh, spend some time in cities in uh, Eastern Europe, and it, I was surprised and distressed to see that the U.S. embassies were fenced. It, it felt to me like hostility and exclusion and fear. I think that I'm probably not the only individual who had those reactions to the fences around the embassies, and I would not want the people in Shreveport to uh, feel that way about our courthouse. Thank you. Thank you. John Cush. What else is going on? Hello. Uh, my name is John Cush, 5801 Lovers Lane, Shreveport. Uh, about a year ago, I brought three old buildings on Marshall Street, and I've been renovating them into living space and some retail, probably a grocery store and a sidewalk cafe. Um, before I bought the buildings, I did my due diligence. I walked around downtown for a couple of days and I really liked what I saw. It uh, appeared to be very safe, it was very clean, and uh, it, on one end you had the river, nice parks, a lot of stuff to do, very inviting. The other end you had art space, municipal auditorium, another park, <coughs> even the cemetery. Uh, very nice space, inviting, open. And in the middle, holding them together, if you will, uh, this beautiful old courthouse square. I mean, it's got this very nice uh, building that just evokes all kinds of images of uh, beautiful towns all over the world. And you've got the big old oak trees and nice wide sidewalks made out of brick. It's, it's great. It's an asset for me. I'm a block and a half away from there. All right, uh, I heard about putting the fence up and I got a little worried because you know things were, were looking up, the bus station's fixing to move, some of the, the problems associated with the homeless may go with the bus station. Uh, I thought there had to be other ways to address this. I think that if you put a fence up, not only do you take a chance mm -hmm. on separating the two ends of downtown and what's going on and people investing people want to come downtown, but you also send them the wrong message that downtown's not safe, mm -hmm. that, that you're scared of something. You're putting up a fence to keep people out. We don't want to keep people out. We want to bring people in. We want to be inviting. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the fence is not a good idea for downtown Shreveport. I know it's a bad idea for me and for people like me, downtown property owners, you know, I've got a large investment. My investment's going to be probably okay no matter what happens with the fence. Right now, the courthouse is a beautiful spot, and it's an asset for me and for what I'm trying to do. I'm not sure that putting a fence around it will make it a liability, but it'll sure take away the asset aspect. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I hope that 
I, this is the first I heard of the park thing. If the designating in the park gives the sheriff all the tools he needs to do what he needs to do, and if that's not as controversial uh, and it's cheaper, I would think that that's a good idea. Uh, you know, in construction, which is what I do, there's always a thousand ways to do it. There's going to be some of them that are much better than others, but there's never just one way to get anything done. Right. And Motion I would extend <clears throat> second. second. Thank you. I would think that. He's got a vote on that. I mean, you just don't. Is there any that. objection to the motion? I'm going to hear from the business on. Lives down. Is there objection? There's no objection. Go ahead. All right. Thanks, sir. The uh, my idea is that uh, downtown's come a long way, and uh, it can it, it has farther to go, but it's on the right track. And to do something uh, not maybe haphazard or you know too quickly, but to do something as a reaction instead of an action uh, might not be the way to go. I thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a Ken. I'm, I'm not sure. Carlton. Calhoun. Calhoun. Okay, I'm sorry. Ken Calhoun. My name is Ken Cowan, 6323 Faust Drive. I've been before this commission before several times with Ken Everson and others. This commission's actually uh, granted us $23,000 to help rebuild part of the areas in Blanchard from the tornadoes. I'm also the same group that does the armed rallies at the Kettle Parish Courthouse that Steve Prater has a problem with. Most of my guys are previous military, special forces. Now, one time has there been a long gun on that property. Number two, no one has ever drawn a gun out at any civilian out there. But you got to realize this is an open carry state. And it's also a stand your ground state. I've stood down in New Orleans and I've seen what happened down there face to face. And there we did have to stand with armed gun, long guns. Because Antifa came in and cut women between their legs, trying to kill them, mm. cutting the artery. And I have pictures if anybody wants to see it. Those are the things that we're trying to keep from Shreveport. And by being there in an the armed presence, we've been able to keep it out. There's a lot of things you don't know that really goes on. We don't want that here in Shreveport. Now, I was th sitting there thinking about, do I want to oppose this fence? The UDC says they're for the fence. The more I listen to all these things, I think I'm for the fence too. As long as that fence is open during any permitted rallies. Now the Supreme Court says they have a right to declare, to ask for a permit. But have you ever sat down and read the documents that they want you to sign? They will not stand up to the means test from the federal government and you're opening yourself up to another lawsuit. You already got one facing over the monument. You fist to find another one if you block off the people. And this little contract you have to sign, read it. It says we have to pay in case anyone gets hurt. Even if an outsider comes in, we're liable. How is that constitutional? Have we succeeded from the union already? Because that's exactly what you're saying when you do that. You have succeeded from the union because you're not willing to follow federal law. We do not stand against any law enforcement officers. We will follow all laws. Now, I run the uh, state uh, militia. I'm also affiliated with the state of Mississippi. In reality, I built militias in 42 states. I am pretty perverse in, in what the Constitution says. There's no threat here against any civilian. But understand this, and me and the, uh, your attorney over there, we had a conversation about what cultural rights were. He said, well, the culture wasn't in there. I said, go reread your state constitution. It is in there. No matter what your feelings are, no matter how bad things happened in the past, and it was, it was a horrible scar on our country. Right. You still have cultural rights for all people, and if you violate that, you violating everybody because if you want one thing in a museum they all got to go in the museum and that's not going to be right for him okay he was a great man thank you
John Sill. John Settle for Tealwood. I'm going to try to make this in three minutes, but you did extend someone's time. If I run over, maybe they'll extend it. I think we're confusing a lot of issues here today, and I hope that y'all can separate them. One, you have an ordinance 5718 that just deals with activities around the courthouse. And with the exception of the typo that in there that Mr. Weiner pointed out, it says no person shall destroy a building or a bridge. I think you take bridge out. I believe this, I don't think there's any real objection to this ordinance if you look at it, because it really, it's a very commonsensical of what you should and should not do with that building. Right. I haven't researched other ordinances in other towns and states. I did that with Uber and Lyft for the city council, but I think that's a very commonsensical ordinance, and, and I don't, I'm hoping that y'all don't have any problems with that. Uh, honestly, I had a hard time finding anything to argue with Sheriff Prater's logic. I mean, it, I kind of followed, and I was trying to say, well, let's see if we can argue this. It's logic is pretty good. So 5718, with the exception of the language bridge, I, don't, I think should be passed unanimously. It, it, it's commonsensical. It gives law enforcement the authorities to, to do what they need to do, and I think that's important. Now, I don't go to the courthouse anymore, but I went for 40 years, and I don't know what Sheriff Prater said is really true. At one time, you could walk into the courthouse, no problem at all, and then they had minor screening. And even today, attorneys have to take their belts off and all that unless they go buy a special car. That's just the way things have cycled. And our courthouse is so old that we bring prisoners in and they have to go through the public hallways and things like that. If you've ever been to Benton, they have a separate entrance, they have separate elevators, and the prisoners come in to the courtrooms there and go back out there. They're not walking the halls with civilians there, et cetera. The same at Shreveport City Court. One of the challenges we have is that we have a great museum of a courthouse there mm -hmm. that is not built to modern standards. Now, I haven't been to a lot of courthouses in Louisiana, but think about this, Shreveport City Court. Are there a lot of trees and bushes around it on Murphy? No, There's a, it's all grass area. City Marshal can easily patrol the grounds there because there's not a lot of bushes, there's not hidden stairwells, et cetera. Prisoners come in a different way, they have different entrances, they don't walk in the halls. Mm -hmm. How about the new one in Benton? Y'all been up there? Yes. All around, no trees and bushes, right. clear good. view, sure. they have uh, also separate entrances, separate elevators, et cetera. So I think you also have to realize that we're trying to preserve a museum, I know I'm about out of time, but Ours is different. And the beauty of the courthouse is all the trees and bushes. Someone said cut all those down and then you'll have the open area and you can seam in over the steps and then you won't have that problem. Could I have a short extension, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So when you look at that issue and the number of people who go in there, our courthouse is just different. And I don't care about the rest of the state because in other cities, Baton Rouge and Alex, they have new courthouses. Mm -hmm. They have different, a lot of security built in. The grounds are no trees and bushes, et cetera. In fact, you can go to uh, a lot of the small rural parishes here that still have in the middle of town, and they don't have as much trees and bushes. So if you want to preserve the trees and bushes, a fence, a decorative fence fits in. I think you need a fence just like the ordinance. I can't go into Betty Virginia Park uh, at 10 o'clock at night. I can't go into right. Ford Park at 10 at night. The fence just allows to control people coming in at the wrong times with the wrong motives. It doesn't interfere with free speech. It doesn't interfere with people assembling. It doesn't interfere with these other things. And the fence around the library, I think, looks appropriate. It can be built to look like the rest of the downtown. I think you need the ordinance and the fence together for the very reasons that Sheriff Prater indicated. And, and I don't see it looking like prison. I don't see it interfering with constitutional rights. I don't see it doing anything. I think it just makes things easier. 
The other issue about the permit, uh, whether or not it's constitutional, the indemnification clause, that's an issue that needs to be dealt with by legal staff. The idea of the permitting is to let law enforcement people know what is going to be a group coming down there. And a permit is valid to require a permit. Now, what's in it, there may be some questions about the indemnification clause. But that's not what's before you. You have two ordinances. I really think you need them together. Thank you for your extra time. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, is there anyone here to speak in oppos in favor of? Right, right. But I'm, the, I'm on the other one. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5715 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5715 of 2017? Yeah. All right. Where's he got to read it? Oh, not over there. Yeah, Where's Todd? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Uh, ordinance number 5701 of 2017, adopting volume two of the code of ordinances relative to the unified development code of zoning and subdivision generally, repealing chapter 54 and certain sections of chapter 48 of the Caddo Parish Code of Ordinances. Is there anyone? We need, we need uh, 5715. Right? Yeah, we need 5715. Yeah, 57. Uh, yeah, we need read it. Ordinance number 5715 of 2017, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and to authorize the parish administrator or a designee to sell the parish of Caddo's tax interest in certain surplus adjudicated properties. Is anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5715? Is anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5715? I see no one. All right, next. Um, that closes public hearing on ordinances, ordinances for final passage. Let me reread 5701. Yes, that's what we Okay, ordinance number 5701 of 2017, adopting volume two of the code of ordinances relative to the unified development code and zoning and subdivision generally, repealing chapter 54 and certain sections of chapter 48 of the Caddo Parish Code of Ordinances. Hmm. Yeah, mo I motion, motion to approve. You can't, you can't do that. I'm the oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Could you do it? Good. No, you go ahead and do it because I have an amendment. Um, I have, I'd like to make a motion to amend 5701. <laughs> uh, to change the effective date from September 30th, 2017 to December 1st, 2017. Second. Is that correct, Henry? That's correct. Okay. And this is the one that LB and I had worked on, correct? Yes. Okay. And for context on that, Do I need to, what is this only did sign one again? Okay. Uh, and also um, ask that it be amended to to put this language in there. This is Commissioner Lynn language. No, it's commission it's excuse me, it's attorney Bernstein's language and it was all sent to you ahead of time. Uh, to say be it further ordained that any property owner at the time of the effective date of this ordinance that had property zoned parentheses changed to a more restricted zone classification closed parentheses to another zoning classification as a result of the implementation of the new zoning map adopted by operation of this ordinance has 24 months from the effective date of this ordinance to submit an application and no charge for MPC board consideration. Second. Yes. Do I have everything in there? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Matthew, you, you, I guess I made a motion. So, okay, can you come up and talk? This is the one that you and I and Commissioner Johnson had, had right. got everything ha uh, hammered out. Mm -hmm. Everything should be in order. And this just, just makes the effective date. Um, Simple one. Simple one. Simple one, and also, I guess, puts in Matthew's right. language that y'all worked on. Correct. Okay. Matthew, do you have anything? Um, sure. I'm happy to speak on it, um, but Mr. Bernstein, if you'll fill in any gaps after I finish, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, what, is, what has happened is that in the implementation of the UDC, the master plan gave the head of the MPC the authority to downzone any property that they saw fit. So if you had farmland, it could be residential, or that's just an example. I'm not saying that's what happened. Um, 
we had asked, or I had asked Mr. Bernstein to get with the MPC to find out exactly whose property was down zoned so that we could visit with them about that. They did not have that information, but they did admit that property was down zoned. So if you had the right to do something in the prior code, that right may have been taken away from you in the implementation of the UDC. And so what this does is create a 24 month window for you to appeal that decision. Um, I'm still working with Mr. Bernstein and Mr. Sweeney to try and find out the names of those owners, those property owners, in order to get that done. That's, that's it. So that's what this, it just gives a window of opportunity for property owners. And the, the new zoning map itself was actually developed by the consultants. That's their perception of what needs to be zoned how. Uh, the MPC voted to create this 24 month window uh, for the city. Uh, Commissioner Lynn's or, uh, amendment does the same thing on the parish level and basically if your property say was a B2 under the old zoning map and it becomes a B1 then you would have a 24 month window to come back and say you know I'd like you to reconsider it and you don't have to pay the application fee so it basically is for no charge be able to come back and ask the MPC and then ultimately you all to rezone a piece of property uh, because of the change in the map so, and then to to go back and to just put a book put a history together as you recall when this was introduced in June uh, Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner uh, Dominic had some concerns between Monday and Thursday the amendments that we worked up were put into the ordinance so the ordinance as introduced had everything in it that Commissioners Dominic and Johnson asked for that was referred to the MPC the MPC at their meeting first part of this month uh, approved all of those changes uh, so the MPC has now voted on it, which means it's now on your agenda for final passage. We would ask, recommend these two amendments, number one, to delay the implementation of it, to give the MPC time to make a transition so that somebody that submitted, for instance, an application today knows what rules are going to go under and then the MPC will implement this as of December 1st. Uh, Stephen Jean uh, with the MPC is here if you want to ask him any questions about that transition. The other is, as Commissioner Lynn pointed out, because of the new zoning map, there might be changes in zoning of property that this gives people an opportunity to come back and say, I disagree with the change in zoning, gives them an opportunity to come back at no charge to themselves and get the MPC and then ultimately you all to make a change if it's, if it's warranted. Um, and with that, because of the uh, MPC approving all these amendments, all it will take is a seven vote uh, seven, seven affirmative votes by the Commission to pass it since you're not overriding the MPC in any way. Okay. Please vote. Thank who, you. Who was the second, sir? I got uh, Commissioner Lynn. Lynn. Okay, this one's sir. He was asking okay. to vote. I got you. That's on the amendments. Okay. They would you would now need to uh, move to adopt okay. as amended. Um, make a motion to adopt as amended. <laughs> Please vote. <clears throat> and that passes nine to zero two. Next, we move to ordinance number 5712 of 2017, amending the budget of estimate revenues, expenditures, capital outlay fund, and a general fund in the amount of 200000 to provide appropriation to place a fence or bollards around the Cattle Crash Courthouse. I make a motion that we um, adopt this ordinance with one amendment that it be used for the appropriation to place a fence, a fence only. Uh, that's my motion if I can get a second. Okay, so I have a motion by myself, second by Commissioner Lynn Cawthorn to basically make the appropriation with the $200,000 uh, for the fence. Anything done? No. Okay. Um, just briefly, I'll, I'll speak. You know, we've heard from the sheriff, we've heard from uh, different individuals. 
Um, again, kind of the same thing that he said. Um, the sheriff is our Homeland Security Director. He is our sheriff. Uh, I think he's an expert. He's made this uh, request, um, said something needs to be done, uh, unsafe, unhealthy, uh, that this will hopefully uh, secure and provide a safer courthouse in case something happens. As you remember, I think it was uh, Deputy Long, is that the name? No, no. Who's it? Jones, 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 sorry, Jones said Jones. it's Jones. not Jones. a matter of if but when something's going to happen and those words you know hung strong on me for quite some time this is something that's not just come about as right. Commissioner Bowman said uh, it's something that's been talked about for uh, a couple of years now uh, I know that some of you guys are against that um, I would ask that we move forward with the fence I don't want to see anything else put up there either let's vote and put the fence there or vote no and uh, move on so that's all I have to say Commissioner Chavez thank you I'd like to make a substitute motion uh, my substitute motion is for the 200,000 create a outdoor bathroom allocate $50,000 for the upgrades in the security system at the courthouse and push out a uh, a ruling on the fence for three months to where we can get a assessment a threat assessment to where when we come back in three months I don't uh, think you can number one a question Don I would ask is this germane to the ordinance I mean we, we have an ordinance yeah, right. so Let the, me part, talk. the part about the bathroom you didn't have given proper pro public notice of that but if you're going to move to push the vote off anyway, you got time to do that. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to let it go back to you. Do you want to make a motion to I'm gonna finish my motion. You want to make a motion I'm to? Gonna, I'm going to finish my motion. For this 200000 I'd like to make my substitute motion that we add an outdoor bathroom. Okay, we just said you can't do that, correct? She said because we didn't do uh, previously announce it, but in the minutes held on the 8th day of December 2016 in the Cattle Parish Commission Cultural Understanding Committee, they yes. passed the resolution to move this to the full body of adding three outdoor bathrooms. Okay. No, Commissioner, this, I mean notice for this particular meeting. So what I would suggest if you want to push the vote off is make that motion on the fence so that you have time to introduce an appropriation ordinance for the bathroom. You're saying legal act cannot add a motion to do something? You can, if it's different from what was noticed, it has to be an agenda addition unanimously. Because you don't have any notice that you're doing something different than what was on the agenda, the title, not then you can't There's make a motion, a substitute motion out. for that. Yeah, Okay. Well, if, it's, if it's not germane, then if, if, if the acting chair has ruled it not germane, then it's not germane. But I don't think that, I mean, I asked Donna, and she basically said the same thing. I requested it. Yeah, I don't think the bathroom so You say it's not germane to the time. Yeah, if, he wants, if he wants to make a motion okay. to, to, to move this or um, to another <laughs> date, or, or right, right. you know, then that's fine. All right, then let me push this out for three months. I'll make a motion to put, push this out for three months. Second. Two. To delay for three months, right? Okay. Fifty-seven, twelve is to delay for three months, correct? Right. And I'll speak on it. I got a second. All right, so let me speak on it. We got the threat and the one that said, see, Lewis that said something. I don't know exactly what he said about preparedness or whatnot, but it, that reminds me of something that I heard that said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Mm. So I'd like to read something from a constituent that I received. Dear Commissioner, I write you in strong opposition to the pending motion to erect a fence around the Cattle Parish Courthouse, which may take place on September 21st, 2017. My view is based on having worked in the courthouse, viewed it daily for almost 60 years, mm. tried hundreds of cases in its courtrooms, and written a history of the building. My opposition is based on the following. Any sort of fence would impair the beauty and integrity of the courthouse, which has been nationally recognized, recognized as the most handsome in the state. It was designed by renowned Shreveport architect Ed Neal and was selected as the model for present Kansas City, Missouri courthouse 
by former President Harry Truman when he had the responsibility to make that decision. Mr. Neal also was selected for remodeling of the present White House in Washington, D.C., wow. whose grace and beauty is apparent to anyone. Any wall or fence would have necessarily be, <clears throat> excuse me, any wall or fence would have to necessarily be made of brick, wood, stone, wire, or iron fencing. The solid materials would be impractical and expensive, and the open ones such as iron post or cyclone fencing would be inappropriate. Any fencing would present a problem to the basement parking of the Sheriff's Department, including prisoner transportation and ingress, which now takes place on the east side of the courthouse. Also a problem with a gate for the handicapped entrance on the east side. The handsome oak trees planted around the perimeter of this courthouse grounds by a long deceased and respected Caddo judge could further complicate construction and maintenance of any perimeter fence. None of the other 64 courthouses around the state have found it necessary to build a wall or fence around them. None of the other 64 guys, I want to I wanna touch on that. The Caddo Parish Commission and its predecessor, the police jury, deserve recognition and praise for the first class, pristine manner in which the courthouse grounds have been maintained for over 100 years. They should not be damaged or desecrated by such an inappropriate proposal. Thank you for your serious consideration. Now, we look at the threat and the solution. The threat, let's take it step by step, defecation and urine. I've come up with a, a solution for an outdoor bathroom, which we, the commission, in a, in a committee, we have already voted on. on. Yep. So we can take care of the safety issue of the defecation and the urine on the courthouse grounds. Now, the reason I say we need to handle this hold on, is... Hold on one moment, Commissioner Chavez. You made a motion. You had I'm, that. I'm you speaking on it really quick. Well, hold on. You made a motion to postpone. So right. we have to make sure we have right. a motion to postpone. Yeah, so make sure we keep it to the... All right. We obviously need to postpone this because we need to research this, but these are the items that we need to research in consideration while we're postponing this. If we put a fence up and we cease the, the uh, defecation in the urine on the courthouse grounds, where is that going to go? In the breezeways of businesses throughout our downtown district. That's not what we want. Mm -hmm. We don't want the homeless defecating and urinating in the breezeways of our businesses. It's just going to further exasperate the problem. What other, what other threats do we have? Hiding weapons down there. We have on the agenda today to deem this a park, and I hope you guys stand with me to do that, and we will accomplish exactly that. There will be no more open carry, and we can negotiate the hours of which the park will be open and closed. What other do we have as far as a threat? Deputy Jones came in and said, and, and, you, and I quote him, he thought it was more of a security for a car bomb running into the courthouse. A car bomb. A fence is not going to stop a vehicle hitting the courthouse. <coughs> it's not. I think we have the solution in front of us to wait three months. We can hire and get an assessment to see what's the real, what is, what is the real threat assessment to the courthouse. We can think of the people downtown, the homeless, not just the security, not just the safety, but the, the sanity of what's going on downtown with the people on the courthouse lawn. We can take care of this, the That's sanitation. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Commissioner Lynn, you spoke on you make the second. Yes. Um, I also think that we should push this back three months to look at. People have said, well, the library has a fence around it. Well, the library has a fence that's about four feet off of it around it um, and if we did a fence four feet off of the courthouse that would encase those those bushes that they're talking about taking down and that's a completely different aesthetic view than a court than a courthouse that has a fence all the way to the sidewalk a fence all the way to the sidewalk tells tells me when I see it is that I'm not in a safe spot Downtown has come so far as far as developing business, small business owners, Robinson Film Center, mm -hmm. people like the gentleman that came here before, which I'm familiar with his property, he's, that's about a $3 million investment in downtown Shreveport. When you see fences, you see don't go there. And that would apply don't go to don't go to downtown Shreveport, and we've been working many many years to turn that that vision around. 
if there's not guards at, at the entrance to the to the inside of the gate, I I worry that people once inside, if something did happen, then they're funneled to one particular concentrated spot, so your human density in one location is increased mm -hmm. in in trying to get out. And so I I would like a a, a a real study done on paper and presented to the commission on the practicality and the true safety of it. What I think all of us have seen in this world is that if somebody wants to do something bad, they're going to do it. Whether it's a, a fence or an armed guard or TSA patting you down, people have been figuring out a way. If somebody could go get a crop duster in, in North Caddo and do something with that. And so if somebody is set on doing something to their ex-spouse, to anybody, it's going to happen. And that's, that's a sad world that we live in. I mean, we're very fortunate that the judges have uh, bailiffs, armed bailiffs that walk them to their cars. And so I feel comfortable about their safety. Um, I, just, I just hope that we, that we slow down on this and, and reach out for some other sources and look at some other options besides just putting a fence all the way up to the sidewalk around our courthouse. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lyndon Johnson, did you want to speak on the substitute motion to postpone? Yes, I want to kind of amend it a little bit, uh, fine tune it somewhat. <laughs> this thing uh, is amending. I know the motion is to postpone it for three months, but in that three months' time, I would like to also task our uh, administration to do a vulnerability assessment study uh, using Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security. And then from that study, we will know exactly what we need to do in order to protect the lives of the people going in and out of the building and also protecting the building. Because what we got now is a lot of different people ideas of what we need to do. But if we had the vulnerability study done by the Department of Homeland Security, then we'll have a study to run off of to then to allocate funds to, to, to remove bushes if we need to, trees if we need to, or erect a fence if we need to. We'll have some in black and white from a professional that, that, that do that all the time instead of just going by somebody's idea of what we need to do. If I can get a second to that. Second. Thank you. That's the longest motion I've ever seen in my life. Really. <laughs> so, that's you know, of course, you're that's not right. supposed to talk, but it's detailed. Well, do you want okay. to on your motion? So he just did. So let me get this straight. So your <laughs> amendment, Donna, and I guess he can do this, is a, a substitute or amendment uh, to postpone would be to do a what you call a detailed what was it? It's a, a vulnerability, vulnerability assessment study. study. A right. Vulnerability assessment study. Right. Okay. So we have so a I think he's amending his I'm amending, motion. I'm yeah, amending he's amending his, his motion. motion. I tend to believe you can do the amendment to substitute. Uh, so uh -oh. Do we have a second? Yes, we do. Yes. yes. So there is a <laughs> second. So you spoke on your motion. Yeah, I'm just so Commissioner Gage Washington, you want to speak on your second? Yes, I think that's a great place to start. We've heard um, from both sides today, and I think that that is something that is much needed for us to move forward. So I support that. Uh, are you on for the amendment to the substitute? Yes, yeah, so I was going to talk yeah. briefly. I just, um, you know, I, I'm ready to move on, and I would like for us to vote on the fence. And if you want the fence, vote on the fence. And if you don't want to vote on, vote no. And you know, vote no. Um, <laughs> we continue to to look at this, and continue to look at it. It's been to the long range uh, committee. Um, and kind of like the monument. <laughs> uh, again, the sheriff is our Homeland Security Director. He is our Chief Law Enforcement Officer. We are in changing times. Some of the stuff that Mr. Settle said uh, back when he first started practicing law, not myself, but you could walk in the courthouse. Then they started having the monitors. I mean, then it was lawyers could go, but if you were a Litigant, you got checked now. They check the lawyers. You have to take your belt out. The only way I get to go through is one of the benefits is I do have a cattle parish commission badge, so I get to walk through. But everybody else is checked. So there's a changing of the times. I agree that the fence is not going to be the most aesthetic thing, and it's not going to look good. But I'll tell you right now, I don't want a porta potty on there. I do know y'all talking about. And get on that issue. I do not <laughs> want a porta potty. You're talking about unasked. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. 
We may paint it. So I say let's vote for the fence. And if you want to vote no, vote no. And uh, but you know if y'all want to vote to pass it, then I understand. Okay. Uh, commit. Attorney Frazier. Two issues of clarification, um, particularly for those who are watching. I heard. Um, the ordinance you have on for introduction about deeming it a park. And I want to clarify that that does not deem the courthouse grounds a park. The parks ordinances are a little bit broader than what's in that ordinance that's on for introduction. That ordinance was specifically tailored from the parks ordinance to fit the courthouse grounds. It will only apply to the courthouse grounds. The um, second point is, I think you said three months that would normally be your second meeting in December, which you do not have, so it would actually be the first uh, meeting in January oh, no. before this came That's back good. up. So I want to make That's sure fine. that y'all knew That's that. Good. Come ready to work in, in January. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's I just good. I don't I don't want anybody looking around in December saying where's this right. Well, could, I, <laughs> me, <laughs> well, could I ask for a friendly amendment to put up to three months because I tend to believe that this may only take about a month or so uh, to get an assessment in here. Uh, I'm good with that. You, yeah. yeah good. Uh, so if we finish before three months, let's come back to the table. Are the bathrooms included in your amendment? <laughs> we're gonna read it. I think they're gonna take all the everything like, into we're, we're everything. Gonna, we're gonna get that later. So. Get that out of there. All right. So they accepted that friendly amendment. Uh, Commissioner right. Bowman. That's, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lyndon Johnson second. Yeah. Yeah. Have a yeah. and, so the other piece of the, the puzzle that we're missing is we got a bunch of homeless people, yes. and we have nonprofit organizations in Shreveport and Caddo Parish that are supposed to be addressing the homeless issues. So we need to be trying to also find a way to get the homeless people from in front of the courthouse and put them in a shelter or get them some kind of way to, that they're not there. Uh, so that should be another task that should be done simultaneously while we're doing this. Because homeless people has not always been in front of the courthouse 24-7. This is just something that's started recently. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is also get those nonprofit organizations on board to help with these homeless people so that they won't be there all the time. President. All right. <coughs> um, uh, did you want to go? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I said, oh, I'm sorry. I see Dr. Wilson first. Oh, I didn't see you. Let's have Dr. Clarification, President Jackson. To the motion is coming under discussion. Uh, I'm being asked to contact the Office of Homeland Security. On the bottom building assessment study? Yes. So I'm going to ask y'all greater to do the study. No, in writing. They, there that's is a department of Homeland Security. Uh, not locally, it's from other than local. Yes. Oh, there thank is a you. Department. <laughs> okay, just want to clarify which one is this. Something that these guys do day in and day out. That kind. Of, not the director of Homeland Security, but well, a member of the Department of Homeland Security that does, does compliance and, and does assessment. Can I, can I ask you, um, probably make another, I believe the U.S. Marshal's Office is tasked with doing do assessment. They, they don't do it anymore. They don't do it, okay. We, we, we inquired about that. Okay. They have a, an assessment and okay. a compliance department, so check Okay. Uh, Commissioner both. Yes, sir. I just wanted to add, yes, I do agree. Um, I understand that homeless people may seem like uh, undesirables for people but the reality of it is even with the groups that we have if we increase more groups uh, they're humans too and they're able to walk and go around and go wherever they are able to just like we would so uh, we need to look more at working with organizations for solutions as far as feeding them a housing but we can't really control I mean what's going on I think that um, I understand how the DDA and everyone feels about property, but these are human beings, and if I was homeless, I wouldn't want to be treated the way some of us are trying to treat some of these homeless people right now. If, if they're going to be out there, then let's provide a bathroom, a port, port of left for them, until right. we can find a, a great area where we can have an enclosed bathroom. But they're there, we need to address what's going on now, we need to do what we can now. Uh, like with the Porter Lens, or to move forward, we can't just not just move just like they don't matter. Thank they are people too. And 
just because of where you come from, your demographics and race, that's why I don't care about all that. We're all human and we need to treat people with human and decency and try and look at ways to work towards that. That's all I want to say. All right, uh, Attorney Frey. One thing that I did want to point out is that when you have a threat assessment done, that document is normally not made public because it um, exposes what the vulnerabilities and weaknesses are. So I just we won't get to see it then. Well, you won't get you won't get it presented at a public meeting. We'll do an executive. Session. We shouldn't need to see it then. Okay, uh, Commissioner Lee, a second time. Um, I just want to back up what Commissioner Bowman said is that that people that are homeless, some people choose that. And they have the right to be anywhere they want. And when he says Portland, he doesn't mean Portland. He means a I mean, yeah, like a that. Portland Lou, which, which this is a, a proven enclosed bathroom that has a 15 minute lock on it and opens up, and so it is safe um, for everybody. Anyway, that's it. Um, I'll add real quick that um, if we're trying to deal with the homeless issue down there. Uh, Hope Connections has been trying to build a low restriction shelter which would uh, allow for a lot of the homeless individuals that you see downtown. A lot of times those homeless individuals do not want to be housed or they do not want to be in those homeless shelters because of the rules. And so they require them to go up, get out, go look for employment during the day. They, get, they require them to be in at a certain time, those kind of things. Hope Connections uh, has built a relationship. Christopher Zackler probably knows, and her team probably knows, every single homeless person that is camped out down there. Uh, they are trying, along with Christian Services, to build a hub to address homelessness. Uh, if there was a low restriction shelter in place, uh, there is no low restriction shelter. Right. Uh, I believe the City of Shreveport Department of Community Development has uh, agreed to put in some money. I just sent Krista a message asking her where are they on the low restriction. She said they're about four hundred thousand dollars short on completing their four hundred completing their low restricted shelter. So when we start making suggestions and recommendations, uh, do know sometimes that opens us up to uh, being put into play and we can choose whether to participate or not. It doesn't obligate us, but just know that once we start going that route that we open that door for that opportunity to present itself. Uh, I agree that uh, we do need to address the homeless situation, uh, but you know I don't mind delaying for up to a certain while. I don't think it takes them a while. As soon as you contact somebody, they usually uh, come in, get it done pretty fast, uh, and have it uh, turn around. There are also some private organizations uh, that do that as well. So uh, just wanted to throw that out as an FYI in case the federal government in case they say no, they, they're not allowed to come over and do it. Uh, there are some private entities that will come over and do that assessment. And I would also encourage that, um, you know, if, if the sheriff needs to be involved or some deputies, Captain Jones, uh, one, am I for building a wall at the courthouse? No. But uh, I do want to make sure that we are not ignoring the uh, echoes of our law enforcement, the person who we have designated as the Homeland Security person. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to have a conversation where everybody has been able to provide their expertise uh, as well as allow for Kel Kevin to be a part of that conversation uh, because from an operational aspect, uh, he has to be included as well. So let's be sure that everybody has an opportunity to uh, stake out, put their stake in, or put their two cents in on it, so we can make the most informed decision. Uh, I do not want our homeland security person, because sooner or later they'll just walk away and say, I'm not doing it anymore. And now we are out there looking for a homeland security person if we're not going to take that recommendation. So uh, somebody just sent me a note that said, Wilson has access to the latest, to the last one. How old is the last homeland security assessment? It was like 2011. 2011, so yes. it's about five years, six years old? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if y'all want to, if somebody wants to come up and look at that, will you show it to them? Uh, I don't have it. I spoke to the shelf attorney about it yesterday. They will have to view it in their office. Okay. For the same reason that Attorney Frazier pointed out earlier. Okay. 
So if there was an opportunity to look at that assessment, again, please make the efforts to look at the assessment. But uh, hopefully we'll be back to put some resolution to this. Uh, and I hope this will not affect the rules and regulations that we're trying to put in place either. Uh, that's pretty low maintenance. Uh, there's also an opportunity for us to do bullets here. I don't know if anybody paid attention to that as well. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Linden I was going to call for the question. Second. I uh, see it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, we have a substitute motion to postpone up to three months until we have a detailed security threat assessment. Actually, we have building. actually we have an amendment first. Right. We need to okay, so there's an right. amendment to, to, the to, to the substitute motion. motion. So there's an amendment to do a detailed vulnerability assessment, assessment, assessment study, uh, study uh, to go with the what's his name. So please vote on the amendment. So we're gonna have we're gonna have at least two votes at least at the minimum two votes. <laughs> so we're gonna be really <laughs> So this right now is the amendment to add the okay. detailed the detailed vulnerability assessment study done. Which is right. going right. to be attached to the three to up to. No, that's attached to your Chevy. Yes, correct. 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 So uh, this is the mo this is the amendment from Commissioner Johnson to do the detailed uh, vulnerability assessment. Please vote on the amendment. This is on the amendment. Okay, that passes eight to three to do the detailed assessment. All right. Now, this is a motion to do the up to three months. We're delaying up to three months until there is a detailed uh, assessment done. Okay. Please vote. Please vote. Y'all yeah, know I like to make my Mr. own mind up. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That passes eight to three. So that delays it. And that delays it. It'll yes, stay sir. on the agenda, but that delays it. All right. Right. It'll come back. All right. Next. Next, we move to ordinance number 5715, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator designee to sell tax interest. So move for adoption. Second. All right. Please vote. That passes 12, 11 to 0 with one out of the chamber. And Commissioner Lewis Johnson did want me to state for the record that he is out. He has a form that he had to be at, so he did. Next, we move to ordinances for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5716, an ordinance amending the budgets of estimate revenues and expenditures for the building maintenance fund, capital improvement fund, general fund, health tax fund, oil and gas fund, parks and recreation fund, public works fund, and the solid waste fund for the year 2017 to terminate completed or lapsed capital projects. Next we have ordinance number 5717 to deem property surplus and authorize the sale of surplus property owned by the parish of Caddo. Ordinance number 5718 to amend section 3246 of the code of ordinances relative to the parish courthouse grounds to generally regulate activity on the grounds. <clears throat> Next, we need to move. move. To the work Moved by Commissioner Gage Watts, second by Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. Please vote on the ratification of the minutes. Am I still picking up back there? Appreciate it. All right, that passes 11 0 with one eye of the chamber. Would the control room please turn my mic down? I'm getting. I need feedback. his volume. Okay, next we move to re resolutions. Resolution number 67, amending the appointment of Poet Laureate for Caddo Parish. This was delayed from September 7th. So moved for adoption. Second. Moved by the chair, second by Commissioner Lynn. I see, did you want to speak, Commissioner Atkins? Let me set me, Lynn. Uh, Commissioner Atkins, go ahead. Thank you. I just thought that we, we had an agreement that there would be uh, $1, up to $1,500 in expenditures allowed. But make the amendment. I think you got to make that amendment. Yeah, he's making an amendment. He's not making it. Well, right. no, I'm just this is for discussion. We didn't. We never did amend the actual resolution. So it came so back to, just as it went yes. out. So you All have right. to you That's have fine. to make the amendment. Did I make the amendment? See, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that the committee was going to work. Right, it'll be okay. It's it's back on there already. Okay, we got you. We 
All right, that's fine. Let's carry on. Uh, Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. Um, just like we talked last time, I think that this is not needed. Uh, the special pants are buying fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, the last ones we had, they got the money and, and didn't see them. So uh, unless there's something that's going to be put in place that's totally different, this don't need to have it. Okay. Uh, that it. That's it. Commissioner Chavez. Uh, thanks. I'll, I'll make the amendment uh, that we do. We give them the fifteen hundred dollars, but yeah. um, they only get the money if they go do uh, some work. For instance, let's give them a. a we'll cover their travel, and uh, give them like a fifty dollar per day DM for doing that that day's work. Uh, so yeah. just how we handle our travel, they, we turn in our travel pay over to finance, and we reimburse for the expenditures and then the poet lariat will also get a fifty dollar stipend for that day that they work. Up to fifteen hundred dollars. Up to fifteen hundred dollars, right. Yours longer than mine. Your amendment was longer than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Jermaine though. It was Jermaine. <laughs> it was Jermaine. <laughs> it was Jermaine. <laughs> I am lost. Okay. <laughs> okay. Seems fair, guys. Okay. Hope All you right. support it. All right. And who made the second on that? Second. I second. Okay. Uh Commissioner talked on second. Did you want to speak on Go ahead. second? Uh, no, I'm just okay. consistent with what. Uh, okay. Uh, Commissioner oh. Dominic, did you yeah, want to speak yeah, on yeah, this? Yeah, no, no, I'm making, a, I'm making a motion. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make a substitute motion. Okay. All right. Um, Come up. Go ahead. <laughs> make a motion that would delay this to move it to the long range committee if I can get a second. Second? <laughs> no, we're going to stop delaying stuff. Look, guys, last time we were here, uh, Let's Miss Edge. That's what I was waiting That's for. That's what I'm she's here. here. Can, can we get her up to, to, to explain to us? We got to spin the rules. No, she can spin the rules somehow. Thank you. No, we don't have to. We already know. They're suspended. What we need to do? You suspended them. You're going to send it back to Long Yes, ma'am, you're coming. To that committee meeting. Uh, so she already done it. Okay. Good long afternoon. Do you want me to? Uh, <laughs> hang on one second. Hang on. Yes, she's a busy woman. Uh, I made a mo I didn't see you sitting out there. I made a motion to, to put this to the long range to committee. Up, right. Yeah. I don't um, think you got a second. I did. I second. That was a second. <laughs> you can also your motion. Now you see her. I'm going to just bring it up. Are you going to send me home? I'm just going to bring it up. You going to bring it up? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Don't Come. go home. That means go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that means continue. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm here to give an answer or a reaction or a plea. So let me just try to address for a moment. I'm Pam Atchison from the Shreveport Regional Arts Council putting forth the suggestion that you amend the uh, resolution that was made several years ago to honor, and that's the key word, you're um, honoring an outstanding poet by presenting an award. They're not work for hire, and I need to say that I honestly think if you see it that way, we should do as, um, Commissioner Johnson suggested and not have the award because really this is like a fellowship for saying this is in all of Caddo Parish the outstanding poet who we can look to to commission new works to come to our meetings and to represent us throughout the parish. Now your previous, com your previous poet laureate was indeed Carlos Colon who died a year ago but before that as part of what he did for a total of $1,000, which was the amount then, right. was pre present at every Art Break Festival. He did workshops at the festival uh, for students and trained them in how to write, and he went into the schools on behalf of the parish to do that. But I'm so glad that you noted, uh, Commissioner Johnson, that he did not come here, and it would be great. That's why I've asked for the amendment to read that the Poet Laureate would, for your special occasions and for your opportunities to commemorate special um, events and ordinances and issues that you've passed, that you would be able to say, okay, we'd like, we'd like to hear a new poem about that. We'd like to see how an artist would respond. But the honest bottom line of this is that it is following a state tradition. It comes from a former commissioner who saw at the national NACO, that this was a project that other uh, 
uh, parishes, other, um, I, I don't know what you call them that are not parishes, but you know, <laughs> what are they, counties, that's right, that other counties are doing, and the idea is that you're giving a fellowship an award. Right. To try to put things in context, if I may, the Shreveport Regional Arts Council also awards fellowships to artists. They are $2,500 a year, and they are not for work for service. They are recognition of what has been accomplished in a way of elevating our city to a higher uh, cause. And then to say it to you, the Community Foundation awards a fellowship to one artist a year who has being, is being honored for overcoming an adversity and producing art, and that is a $1,500 fellowship. So it might be spoken better fellowship, but as uh, Commissioner Johnson said, I personally, uh, as the Arts Council Director, believe that there should be visibility and that there should be return on investment, and you should feel that there are times that you want to commemorate something great or perhaps not so great through literature, and there's an opportunity for that to be covered in an annual stipend. I think so. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is there any questions for Mrs. Atchison? Yep. She explained I, I, it very yeah, well. Yeah, I would like to withdraw my motion because, I mean, the reason I made it was to make sure you were had a chance. I didn't Thank know you. you were here until I saw right. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you I love disappearing in a crowd. It's rare. Thank you very, <laughs> very much. Um, got you. Um, I'm in, I'll make a motion to uh, remove the $1,500 payment. If I can get a second, I'll explain. Second. Okay. Uh, I didn't. I never knew that this would be, and I didn't. I don't know that I put this on the agenda, or this just kind of came up. On this the this was delayed from our. Okay. Uh, but September seventh. Fifteen hundred dollars payout. I'll give you $1,500, okay? Uh, I don't want us holding, delaying this over $1,500, okay? So you have my word, I'll just make that as a donation to Shrek, okay? Well, were they still? Right? And that is on the record. <laughs> They're gonna represent us. <laughs> so, Who was the second, sir? Uh, Commissioner Linda Johnson. Right. So what is the, All right. Be so we're removing, my amendment is to remove the $1,500 stipend mm -hmm. out of it. So you don't get any stipend? Well, yes. The point of clarification, is this for one year or three? Yeah, because what if you I decide you don't want to So this is next year. So the term of service is for a three year period. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I do have a question. Okay. Go ahead. The, uh, my question is you said that the poet laureate will speak at functions throughout Cattle Parish. They would speak at functions on behalf of Caddo Parish. If you wanted them to speak somewhere else on your behalf, they would. So he, that person wouldn't no. speak for the school board or wouldn't speak for the city of Shreveport oh, or no. speak for the city of uh, Greenwood or Blanchard? This is your okay. poet laureate okay. for right. the Caddo <laughs> Parish Commission. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Uh, Commissioner Lee? Um, I'll be voting uh, against this in removing the money. Um, yes. I think it is the commission's responsibility to handle these issues and not any one individual I commissioner. I agree. Uh, commissioner Dominic, do you want to speak? Yeah, I, I agree with Commissioner Lynn. I, you know, I don't want to get into the conflict stuff. <coughs> but what Atch Atchison just said was if we take it out, the money, then we don't need it. There's no need to even do this. So no, I said I was I doing mean, it because I'm. Doing I, I know it, but I just I, I agree. If we can't do the fifteen hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or something, yeah. then she basically said, "Then don't do it." So yeah, they need um, to eat. I'll be voting against this amendment too. Let's okay, see. Commissioner Atkins. Well, you know, I think the arts are important. I just don't want to see the commission getting distracted or or. Um, losing focus on on what our key issues are and and what the people of Caddo Parish view our key issues are and to me it's a symbolic issue the fifteen hundred dollars it's not a large amount of money um, it, but it's, it's a message that we're sending I think that it's important in these days of um, tax scrutiny and and um, a desire for frugality in government that we send a certain message uh, that we're focused on exactly what we need to be focused on 
my views are not against Shrek. I, Pam knows I've, I've supported Shrek, uh, but, um, but it's just a message that I think we need to be focused on. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, wrap this part up by just saying, you know, uh, we spend millions and hundreds and thousands of dollars on, on stuff and we ask less questions and scrutiny. So let's yes. I agree. So I agree with that. That was just so let's vote on the amendment. Please so vote. Mr. President, what can What's you remind us what we're voting on? To remove the fifteen hundred dollars. All right. Please vote on the amendment. Yeah. It's to remove, but still name remove it. Right. The poet no, this is just to remove. Oh, just to remove it. To remove it and Commissioner Jackson is saying <laughs> All right. That passes seven to four. Now we need to. Now we need to adopt it as amended. What are you doing? What are we doing now? Um, I see what I have to add. <laughs> To adopt it as amended. Ham, are you okay with that? We adopt it. Either vote yes or no to it or as oh, amended. No. All right, that passes 7 4. All right. Okay. Next, we move to resolution number 73 to provide an annual certification to the state of Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development in accordance with the off system bridge replacement program. Move to adopt resolution 73 and 70. Second. Moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Stormy Gates Watts. Um, I see you on the board. That was that was Okay, all right. Please vote. There no other questions. Zero with one out of the chamber. There is no old business. We move to new business. We have already taken care of the uh, authorized and request detailed progress reports. I believe we'll have uh, the Airline Alliance come another time and, and speak. Mm -hmm. Next, we move to confirm appointments to the Cattle Pair Sewer District number seven. I move to adopt in Globo um, the appointment of Mr. Fed, but also the Lakeview Waterworks and the Pine Hill Water Works appointment. Second. All right, move by Commissioner Dominic. Do what? I, I'll do yours too, and I thought there may be some discussion. <laughs> you add no? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are you second that one, Commissioner? Yes. Matthew? Okay. I second. Uh, uh, move by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Matthew Lynn to adopt and in Globo. To in Globo and adopt uh, those uh, appointments. Please All vote. Points. All appointments. All of them. I, do, I mean, I don't care. We throw in that last one too. The, the Bozier Shreveport Commission one too. Yeah, that's what we just did. Yeah, 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 that's fine. We we'll confirm it. I'll be. All right. Can, can please vote. People vote no, but it. That passes 11 0 with one out of the chamber. Next, we move to communicate the committee reports, administration response. None. Uh, you want a reminder for tomorrow? A reminder about tomorrow? Uh, yes. Just a reminder, we have a budget for free tomorrow at 9 a.m. So, budget retreat tomorrow at 9 a.m. at Swepco Business Center. Swepco Business Center. Okay. Uh, I'll be out of town. Let me just mention real quickly that uh, Economic Development Committee Subcommittee has a meeting scheduled for Monday, October 2nd at 2 p.m. in the conference room. Economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Monday, Tuesday. Not sorry. Yeah, Monday, yeah, October second. Monday, oh, October second. Not next yeah, Monday. The next your Monday. clerk made a mistake on that. Okay. Todd made a mistake. Your clerk. All right. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. I was gonna make a motion that we suspend the rules and bypass communiques and committee reports and the president report and go to the executive session. Second. All right. <laughs> Moved by Commissioner Johnson. Second by well, Commissioner Middleton to bypass communiques and committee reports and President. President's report. And I don't have one. And go to, to executive session. Uh, 
can we do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. Turn it on the back end. I, I don't know if it was just there chopping it, it off completely. The, um, yeah. Well, just the, our, our control room. Someone will have to stay. Right. So when we come back in session, they can continue. That's right. Yes. Uh, I make sure we turn our phones off, electronics off. I, look, I'd rather write pay on that fifteen hundred dollar check a year than give yeah. it to the IRS. Made a motion. That was a motion. We need to vote on that. Okay, I didn't know you were to go in well, to. Uh, okay, we vote. Don't take a no. Oh, we need to vote on it. Yeah, we need to vote to go in and session. Okay, please session. vote. Did we say who all need to be here. Commissioner Atkins, I'm sorry. Did we say who all need to be here, Todd? No, no, we did not. Do I need to say that? Yes. The attorney probably needs okay. the attorney, would, the administrator. Uh, yeah, the request that the finance director. Who else? Clerk. Clark. Oh, yeah, Clark. Mr. Sutter. Mr. Sutter. Yeah, Gerald. Bob Lash. Yeah. Nah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sutter. Yeah. Mr. Bowman needs your vote. Uh, He's out. I love you. All right, we're good. I think we got a point. One, two, three. Mr. Atkins, I guess we need one to go back in the session. To vote to go into executive session. session. Okay. Sorry, y'all. We're taking so long. Nine zero, that passed. All right, let's give it a couple minutes because we've got to get off the air.